大阪日本における巨大な経済圏を持つアジアのゲートウェイゲート大阪駅に隣接するグランフロント大阪の収穫施設ナレッジキャピタルそれは人と人人と物人と情報をつなげ新たな価値を生み出す知的創造交流の場ビジネスパーソン研究者クリエイター一般生活者多様な人々が集まり人と技術を結びつけ知恵とアイデアを交換することで製品やサービスから文化や人材に至るまで新しい価値を創出面白いをコアバリューとしてナレッジイノベーションを生み出すための施設と機能を最高の立地に実現都市開発の新たな形を作り上げ現在も進化を続ける知的創造交流の場それがナレッジキャピタルなのです I'm representative director, president of Polygon Pictures. I'll be serving as a moderator today. My name is Shuzo Shiota. Now, Isca has been affected by the COVID pandemic, but this is the first time、uh, we are holding this full online program. And since November 30th, we have been running many、uh, online programs. And then、uh, we have been providing a series of lectures by judges. So from、uh, 4 30 p.m.,、uh, we will have i s k a Awards Ceremony.、Uh, let's look forward to seeing different、uh, creative works getting different awards. So now、uh, the time to hear some behind the scenes stories from awardees of the domestic video content category. We, the judges, will ask the creators about what they went through making their films. So, their fun episodes and their,、uh, the difficulties and challenges they went through. So,、uh, now I would like to introduce to you the domestic video content category judges. The first, the, the judging committee chair. Mr. Naohiro Ukawa, he's an artist and he's the representative of the Mune. Now, as Shiota san says, the infection counts、uh, uh, continues to increase. Well,、uh, Tsuten Kakutawa and、uh, the, the, the Tower of the Sun, they're now red. So, I guess I mean it's illuminated red, and、uh, that's the power of the sun, so I guess maybe that's the right color for it. Anyway, joking aside, okay, the second one a short animation creator and also cartoonist, Ryo Hirano. Hi, hello everyone. Well, it's a difficult situation with COVID,、uh, but I'm very glad to see so many excellent creative works. So,、uh, we, I'm looking forward to hearing from nominees and award winners. Uh, we came here in Osaka yesterday, and、uh, until late last night, we had online discussions with creators. Well,、uh, there are many fun, great people there. Yeah, we, we, had, we had a lot of fun. Uh, there was the exchange session at the end and、uh, the long hours, and I think we were almost fainting. So many hours of discussion and having fun. Everyone was participating from different locations online. 
Uh, yeah, you are very loud. Yes, because it's so much fun. Uh, my group's nominees, they, they're really smart people. They're very intelligent. That the foundation of their creation, the base concepts of their works, I thought, were very, very clear. So I just, I just did not have enough time. It was so much fun. Uh, uh, I was with uh, Shiota san in the same room. So I, I think, you know, let, let's, let's wait. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to spill it out, okay? So uh, uh, we, we, we hear from them. We hear from the creators today. So we should not, we should not let it out now. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. Let's hear uh, some stories behind the scene from the creators. Okay, so this is a casual discussion. And first, from Akita University of Art, Kyugen. Let's hear from Kyugen. The work is Yokai TV. Kyugen san, are you there? Hello. Hi. I'm a graduate of uh, Akita University of Art. My name is Q Gen. And then the title of my work is Yokai TV or Monster TV. So basically, the monster's day to day life. How would they live? So that was the basic idea in the creative animation based on it. Well, are you getting home delivery or something? Well, I, I'm not sure what I what I'm supposed to talk about today, so uh, I it came from China. Well, let me talk about my idea. I came. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can, can you just stop a bit? Uh, okay. First, well, uh, we should probably show the trailer of your video before uh, you can talk about your. Yeah, video. Let's just uh, play the trailer. Okay, everyone, please enjoy. Yokai東アジアに行くなら今でしょう。こんなミニギガオの大きい方位方針持ってらったば妖怪テレビもダメだな。前のキュービーのキツネ、あのペッピンさんは休んだか。うーん、わかんね。まあ他の番組見るべし。次は妖怪ニュースです。人の脳を食べる妖怪の故障が英国のプレト大統領の脳内で発見されました。はい、まあこういう、wow、that's So I came to Japan from China, and, and as you know, the politics of China and the Japan are very different. So when I came to Japan, well, I just discovered lots of things that are so different from my own country. So as a foreigner, I felt some of the things in Japan were very funny or interesting to me. That's what I wanted to communicate, basically. And I decided that I'm going to use monsters as characters because monsters and uh, human beings are, you know, the humans and the monsters are creatures who are living in very different worlds, very different societies. 
no, I was just seeing myself like I'm, I'm a monster and then come to this human world. How would the human world、uh, look like if I was a monster from a different viewpoint? So that was the basic concept of this、uh, video. So, Ukawa san, Hirano san, any questions from you? Hirano san, you go first. Yeah, when I first、uh, uh, saw your video, I got a shock. Because yeah, from the very start, well, really blatant sexism, Akita Namahage monster was、uh, uh, saying that the newscaster is ugly, you know, and then something else. I was like, wow, I mean, this is just yeah, re- really over the top from the start. So I got a shock from the start. As k y u g e n s a n you said yourself, yeah,、uh, when I Uh, try to see it from、uh, the distance, S- one step back, and、uh, just to、uh, see the whole picture. Well, it is actually true. There are so many funny things and strange things going on in this society. So, w- watching the human world from outside, well,、uh, there are really stupid things going on. And if, so, that's what you are describing in the video.、Uh, what I thought was. Kyugen san, you are from China, but you just have a very great sense of a Kansai, Osaka type s of a sense of humor, and that made us laugh. That was spot on for us. So, jokes and、uh, laughs, and often, well, jokes sometimes translate、uh, through different cultures and sometimes jokes don't work. So you have to have a very good uh, uh, sensitivity to understand、uh, jokes and humor. So I, I think, you know, we laughed at your joke because the way you look at Japan and、uh, we look at ourselves in Japan are kind of like a synchronized. So you use the wide show. It's like,、uh, it's not news. It's not a variety program. But that's, yeah, you use those、uh, frames.、Uh, Miyasako san and the Ryo san's interview, and Nonomura,、uh, the diet members, and he was like、uh, crying on TV. And, and so you are watching it from the monster's point of view. And、uh, now you are a student of Akita University of Art. So I think.、Uh, You are in Akita and uh, uh, looking at the society in Japan and、uh, yeah, your understanding of the Japanese culture through TV. And that's, that was a great、uh, video. Yeah, the, the quality of laugh and joke,、well, that's really interesting. So, the sense of humor in China, sense of humor in Japan, did you, do you see there's any difference between sense of humor between China and Japan? And how did you incorporate it into? Quality of sense of humor. So, type of, you know, what you think to be funny, what Chinese people might uh, uh, think to be funny. Do you think there are any differences? Or, well, I don't know what to say. Well, in terms of sense of humor, when I watch Japanese TV soap operas and the TV dramas, Well, I felt that yes, this humor is very different in Japan from China. In China, it's more, there are no sort of like fixed jokes, established jokes. In Japan, Well, lots of like,、uh, the jokes are mo- more like rituals in Japan, but in China, and in Ch- Chinese people try to just come up with something to-、uh, yeah, different types of new innovative、uh, jokes and laugh. But in Japan, jokes are more established and cliche. Okay, we have only eight minutes. Uh, we have so many questions we want to ask. I think we, we just talk too much. So I think we should just focus on asking questions and not us talking. But anyway, yeah, actually, we used up our eight minutes. So thank you very much,、uh, Kyugen san.、Um, I hope we'll have more opportunities to、uh, talk t- together.
on a different occasion. Thank you very much, Kyogen san. And next, let's call in the next person, Momoka Furukahara. Momoka Furukahara. Let's start the talk session with her. Furukahara Momoka. Oh, it's a hard work to pronounce her name, it's long. She's from uh, the Tokyo University of Design and Art. The title of the video is The Mark of Emmy. Good afternoon. Hello. Just briefly, can you introduce uh, yourself? We can talk about your work later. My name is Momoka Furukahara. In March this year, I graduated from Tokyo University of Design and Art. Graduated from the university. I joined with the production company of the animation. Momoka, we met you two weeks ago. Yes, long time no see. How are you doing? We were in 20 minutes program, the animation festival in Tokyo. We had fun at that time. Yes, we did. Yes, that was enjoyable. We had a fun. No personal conversation. So let's move on to the trailer of her work. Hi, yeah. Well, it's a wonderful work you created. At the back of the stage, we were talking about your work. So can you tell us the background of production of this uh, work? What was the original idea? Where did you conceive this idea? In the university, maybe in the high school days, I thought about myself because being a woman, very woman-like lines, curves of the body. I thought that they are very attractive even in myself, and I wanted to put this expression in the animation. During the university days, I built up this idea. At the time of the graduation, to culminate my efforts during the university days, this was the fiction. So I wanted to keep the memory of the adolescence, some unstable feelings, love, close to love, but some excitement. There were some occasions I felt so for myself, so I wanted to express them with my own voices. I used a pencil to draw those lines and cartoons keep this my memory. What do you think? So even in the judge board of the other festivals, we discuss your work, Obaish Nobuhiko's work. The same uh, sex, uh, you must have some uh, subtle feelings for the same sex. So production of the short film and video is most uh, fitting. I was talking about this with the Shoda-san, Tanka and Haiku Japanese poems in a short, very poems in a very short sequences and uh, you will be able to appeal them. Likewise, in a short uh, video, I believe uh, this kind of uh, theme works very effectively. What do you think about 
What is the intention of not making this as a long work? To the audience, I wanted them to have a moment to think. With this action, what do you think? That's the type of the question I wanted to appeal. If we are going to make it long, there is excessive uh, feelings, excessive narrative. So I wanted to condense them by using the words emichan. So you try to reduce them as much as possible and to communicate the essence of the story, which was quite a story. I was talking about at this point with Shiota-san. The sounds, voices, very simple lines and drawings. And the sound itself is uh, designed very simple. When I was a student, uh, it uh, must have been uh, very difficult to require a lot of uh, courage. It must have not been possible to reach this level of the production. That was the point I was very much attracted to sounds. So I wanted to put the uh, narrations, but I didn't want to draw any background on the drawings. For example, the sounds of the water or and the types of the sounds. So what are the most desirable sounds which can express my feelings between me and my friends? So minimum sounds. I wanted to express. I wanted to put more time on uh, the production side. So naturally, I try to reduce the sounds as well. Earlier, you talked about the lines in the body lines of a woman. You said this is the culmination of your efforts. So this is a minimalist type of the art, start, uh, art style. And as uh, hiran -san said, this must have uh, required a lot of uh, courage to do that. Have you uh, done a lot of uh, trials and errors before you came here? One work up before this, I created a similar production with the uh, colors. Uh, based on my own story, to put it animation, colorful, digital. I'm interested in uh, viewing that. So because of this uh, existence, you were successful to make it as a minimalist subtraction. So the beauty of subtraction and reduction has been very successful being very young. You are very courageous. And also the uh, record of uh, adolescence, you wanted to keep it in the record, in the memory. That's a life blog and a life log in a way. So I was very much attracted uh, to the notion of sex. Uh, I'm not supposed to say this, but I was charmed by that, that. Maybe not possible to express them in eight minutes. So naturally, I was able to demonstrate my appeal and interest in sex. My alumni uh, student uh, said, you put it in a very delicate and elegant way. Yes, I, ad I admit, very delicate. So I, we are putting a lot of admiration and compliments to you. I just hope that I will be able to make it more refined. So eight minutes have passed, not much time to delve into the points of production. But thank you very much for your wonderful work. Now then, the sex talk was quite interesting. Oyama-kun, you're interested in this. I think uh, they selected the right working place. Next is a Studio Kaba, team of the man on the shore, Hikaru Morishige, Musashi no Art University. Morishige-san of the man on the shore. Hello. Hello. Just simply a briefly introduction produce, uh, 
of the production. Mini art and CG arts are my expertise in Musashi no Arts University. I created with my colleagues the man on the shore. Morishige. You do have the professional type of the microphone. Let's see the trailer. Very powerful. Any questions, Shirana-san? To begin with, so it reminds me of very scientific uh, fiction, science fiction type of the uh, work. How did you conceive this idea? So as for my ideology and designing Otsukun, my colleague, was in charge of designing, and I put it into the video production piece. We have all together eight people. Two are engaged in this uh, video, and we try to exchange our conversations and uh, try to create the uh, video. So you try to reach the common understanding of the universe. And I wanted to use the fake documentary by using our ideology. And I asked the peer to join. So creating this uh, ideology of universe, universe, and how did you end up with this production? Well, to me, video production tools. The selection of the right tools is something always I have in my mind. Ozakun said to me, he designed uh, his idea on the sketch, very quiet. And uh, there is the lead the man living all by himself. He emphasized this idea, isolation alienation, the man working all by himself on the shore. So it's not the player of the game, not from his perspective. Looks like we are watching how the game is proceeding from the top. In the beginning, we, I had that kind of feelings. And I wanted to create this type of video with this idea. That's the reason. Yesterday, I joined that together with you in the reception for drinking. So we had a very good conversation. So we were discussing production and documentary and avant-garde in documentary, how you would be able to remove the barrier between them. And Shafru, a professor of uh, Musashino Art University, and uh, Wiska, the Matsumoto Toshio, the founder of Iska, has uh, impacted a lot. And uh, he was very much aware of the documentary production and Unreal Engine was used as the platform. 
I think it is uh, most fitting to the contemporary world. As uh, we face with the COVID-19, we are not able to do the physical uh, performance, and game engine is now coming. People say that's a crossing reality. That's a new type of the entertainment. It's not the real physical, but uh, one layer above. That's a different domain. VR, AR, R means reality. So we wanted to do the documentary. And if you move on to AR, that's something I can understand. So the original point, uh, starting point is to create the documentary, correct? Right. So what are the areas you think you uh, the, they are documentary? I was discussing this with you yesterday. No production or direction. So there are some areas which are not previously calculated in the design. In a 3D video, production part are able to have the grips over them. The control is in the production side. So they are very much uh, one-sided from the production and the audience direction. After we, I created the environment, I was acting as a cameraman. Then dialogue can be started in the physical shooting. The one who shoot the film and the one who will be shot there is the dialogue possible between them. So it's a very uh, long uh, process. So being a CG creator, I'm wondering how you end up with uh, using eight people effectively. Two people in modeling, two in animation, and the rest of the work are done by myself and one person, six all together. And of course, translation into English, somebody else helped me. I needed the uh, manpower for modeling and animation. That's the part I needed. But I wanted to simplify them, that process. It will not be possible to go to the 3D unless we are able to reduce that portion of labor in reforming photogrammetry. You get them and put it onto the basis. Shortcut is something I always had in my mind. So very contemporary. So in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, I believe 2020, this is most fitting. How can you go in, in there? What do you mean by going in there? Within the annual range, if you can put it in the application, I think you'll be able to go into that application. Well, I see. Well, I think uh, we already consumed eight minutes. But still, in uh, Musashino Art um, University, I was very much surprised you did have such a wonderful team. Thank you very much, Mr. Morishige. That's a block. Thank you. Let me then to introduce the uh, next person, who is also from the Art University, Musashino Art University, and um, Natsumi Somea is the name, and also the title of the content is the Transparent Deer. So Natsumi, please come in. Hello. Hello. So please introduce yourself very briefly. I'm in the fourth year of the Musashino Art University. I'm Natsumi Someya, and I was the director of this uh, this work titled The Transparent Deer. So let's take a look at the highlight of this uh, work. 
国境に空がないという本当の空が見たいという私は驚いて空を見る桜若葉の間にあるのは切っても切れない昔なじみの綺麗な空だどんより煙る地平のぼかしは薄桃色の朝の湿りだ聖子は遠くを見ながら言うたたら山の山の上に前に出ている青い空が聖子の本当の空だというあどけない空の話であるはい So during the,、uh, the discussion for、uh, the、uh, among the panelists, I think Hirano san recommended this quite eagerly, right? Yes,、uh, because I thought this is really kind of mysterious, but、uh, I was really attracted by this. I don't know why, but、uh, uh, interestingly, I was kind of attracted intuitively to this. That is why I recommended this very much at the time of discussion among the judging. Uh, panelist, panel. So it was a kind of a texture that is unique to you. So I want to know、uh, why did,、uh, you、uh, come up with this idea. So, what was the trigger? So, since the first year, I was really interested in the movie making. So, that is why I studied the movie making. I'd like to、uh, develop the scenario, and then I was interested in that. And the battle. And sometimes, even though I write the scenario, something happening in front of me at the time of the actual shooting, there's a difference. So, we, I wanted to have it the same. And the, actually, I didn't uh, use uh, the scenario, for example, or plot. And then、uh, the, I tried to make a film. Is that spontaneous then? Almost spontaneous. Is that what you mean? I have a kind of a plot, but when it comes to the lines that I want them to utter, I just didn't、uh, make the lines in advance. It was spontaneous. So it's like a documentary or a drama, so it's difficult to kind of categorize them. I mean, this goes between the border of a documentary and the drama. I thought it's really unique and new. And so I think、uh, uh, now I understand why you have this type of work. Casting is interesting too, it's unique, isn't it? The,、uh, the actors, the、uh, choice of the actors are yours. So you have this, uh, the, uh, the plot, but the,、uh, the, those actors or actresses were not,、uh, do not know the plot, right? Yeah, actually, I first discarded the plot, first the plot or scenario, and the, then I carried out the kind of interview with the actors, and then uh, the we uh, kind of incorporated to the、uh, second plot or scenario. So that's what we, I did. Right, so I am、uh, glad that the,、uh, because I was the last person to make a comment because I had a lot of、uh, discussion at the online drinking party. So I, we have many、uh, already the, uh, the knowledge about this. And in the 60s, actually, the TV dramas were made like this. Chebi Man Union, the Toku ni Ikitai, was produced. This is the traveling、uh, story, but actually,、uh, the, it's like a,、uh, the drama or a v a n g a r d style, and they were really interested in. In putting it into the documentary, so it's an advanced type of the trial, and it's kind of vice versa. So, first you have a drama, but I think you are trying to make it more like a documentary, so it's a new style. So, that is why I'm interested in that. And the, incident,、uh, the coincidence uh, is uh, Is a friend of yours, I think. So, do, do you have anything that、uh, you can point out where the spontaneity is there? Yes, the Sigara Aiden, right? And the, actually, and the, she is from China. And, the, and I know her since I was uh, look, uh, the, before the elementary、uh, entry of the university and asked. Her to pick it up, and she said, Actually, I can eat this. That's what she said spontaneously. So that scene came into the sea. So the, at, during the interview with the、uh, teacher, and the, we decided to put 
that sea. So Ming Hisako in the 80s, and she ate、uh, the cicadas on the stage. I remember that. Right. I think、uh, it's really great that you included the scene, and that、uh, gave gave a very strong、uh, the atmosphere to the. Uh, the uh, the work and I think you had the、uh, the interview inserted and the and the mosquito part was interesting that the person、uh, the actors were interviewed had a mosquito bite which is kind of obvious yes there are so many mosquitoes at that time and the sweaty sometimes they have lots of sweat and they were in the bush right and so the body images there was really、uh, interesting and it's really real. With those mosquito bites and the sweat, right? It's not like a too fashionable. I mean, it's the childfootness or childlikeness. Is I think I thought it interesting. Often that I'm attracted by that. And actually, the uniform is the kindergarten uniform that I used to go to. Okay, that's I take it from your kindergarten. Yes, the gym PD, uh, uh, the PD uniform that I used to wear、um, in my、uh, kindergarten days were like that. So that's the base of that uniform. I'm really interested in how you go in, t-、uh, how you develop them into uh, more uh, expand this, because at the time of the drama shooting in the past, I think、um, that that was the atmosphere is similar, and also live streaming. For example, there are theatrical performances, and the, they have the、uh, the real time performance, for example, and that documentary、uh, type of、uh, conceptuality of yours is interesting, and I think also this help of the your youth as. Uh, as well, and so you、uh, talked about the and、uh, there is、uh, the, is the gap between the scenario and the reality, and you decided to do、uh, abandon the plot. So how are you satisfied now with the current work? I'm right now、uh, working on the graduation work, and I'm writing the plot right now, a scenario, and. And of course, we need to have the lots of kind of resonance in many people as many as possible. So that's what I like to,、uh, to aim at at the end of the day. So theme development. I mean, in the, the theme that will allow more people to understand,、uh, in a way, is the thing that I want to try. Not to restrict it by many things, but rather I'd like to, I'd like to try out、um, so that、uh, more people will appreciate my work. That's、uh, interesting, and looking forward to that. And 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 then, and I think I'm interested in the work that you will be.、Uh, you will think that this will be understandable、uh, to many more people, and what we think about that. And some, I my guess is that the, it will become more difficult. You're right, but I think uh, uh, the comp- uh, uh, and the finding the middle ground may be an interesting initiative. Or voice. Thank you, and please also、uh, participate in the next sesh- next competition as well. Okay. Again, we have the、uh, the participant from the Musashino Art University. We have lots of from this university, and Kei Tatsuji is the artist, and the title is Don. We have COVID nineteen in this year, and. And at the、uh, beginning of this year, what was the topic we often talk about in Japan? Do you remember before COVID nineteen? Do you remember? And the thing, it's actually、uh, the dawn is the word that maybe a hint for you. Dawn, but it did no. Gone. It's a、uh, uh, colorless gone. Escape from Japan. That was the really. Uh, the hot topic at the time, it's gone. It's not done, right? But、uh, at the time,、uh, and that was a really、uh, popular topic, and it could have continued、uh, until the end of this year.、Uh, yes, that's right. And he put it in the music bo-、uh, music instrument container, and he went on the plane from, I believe, the Kansai International Airport. But anyway, thank you very much for waiting, Tsujisan. And Tsujisan. And please introduce yourself. I'm from the Musashino Art University. I am、uh, studying、uh, in, I mean, the study,、uh, the fourth year in the. I'm studying the、uh, 
uh, the visual images. So this is also controversial uh, work, and I'd like you to see the trailer. So let's discuss about this work. Do you have any question? Uh, so we, some of us, I had a drinking. So uh, I was participating in the Ukara team. So I know a lot of this work, but uh, once again, I looked at this and I thought that the scenery is great. So this, there isn't any kind of grandiose story whatsoever inside of this. And you are also from the Musashina Art University, and I, the man on the shore, man on the shore, uh, tonality, uh, perspective is uh, similar. So it's like a metaverse and type of a thing. So you have the, uh, the world created on the, in, the, the two that you accept the viewer, right? So you kind of. They put the world in front of the uh, the viewer, and the, this is a hand drawing, animation. So how uh, did you come up with this uh, the work? I actually uh, the enjoyed the drawing the uh, the background. Yeah, I can tell that. So I, I enjoy uh, the handwriting, and uh, I uh, study the handwriting animation. I often sometimes uh, have assignments of the hand drawing animation, and the character, uh, the facial expressions, and the, uh, the details uh, can be added, added, ended, and then it can get really, really de-emotional. I mean, we have the kind of the emotional affection, but then if you add the details too much, then the exact emotional aspect will really be kind of reduced. That is why I take out the mouth or take out the, uh, the all those details and we put it into the loop animation. And also can't and the and also the frames and the these are used rather than the detail of the uh, the character. And actually, you have the uh, the peers from the art university. It seems that the, your university has been uh, uh, maybe try to kind of. Up have the learnings from the university lessons and advocating for the reduction and the documentary type of thing. And actually, at the and not on the class language teaching, but when we get the comment from the professors, and sometimes spontaneous uh, thing like, for example, something that is uh, put uh, accidentally and showing in the frame, is actually appreciated by the uh, the professor. So that's kind of an accidental happenings are often evaluated in a positive manner. And so I this time I tried to reduce the details anyway. And the animation, the uh, the author called the uh, the, from the U.S. and the and the, uh, there is a one animator in the U.S. and he is I think you know of this and there is a, uh, the man described with just the, uh, the simple lines and that's also interesting. So at the time when I was at university, so that was actually Don Corrie and they, they are minimalist. So they're. Uh, uh, the perspective is that they, uh, they put the focus on the background rather than the moving characters. And uh, as you said, uh, the animation is like a loop animation and so the inorganic, which is interesting. So, and also the sound design is the thing that I was really uh, drawn to. So you have the steps, sound of the steps, foot steps. It's really kind of primitive sound, but you remember that after uh, seeing that, after watching that. So did you also intentionally do that and to eat some of the sound design? So we have the cameras uh, the, uh, far away from the, uh, the character, but uh, 
and of course the whole character is uh, the walking and having the steps so I wanted to have the sound of wind and the footsteps really close to you because those uh, the characters are hearing those pieces of sound very close. So I think at, at the three minutes or so, the uh, the fell the boy fell, but the, the, he start walking again. But the sound steps are actually really uh, uh, large. So. And even though the uh, the image of the character is very small, and you have the uh, the step sound very large, so I actually uh, rewind it and uh, looked at the many times at the particular scene to see whether uh, the, he started to uh, walk again or not. And actually, uh, the our imagination or assumption uh, of the story and uh, the are different among us. So these two characters, what are those characters sitting, if you can tell me? I often go to my parents' house, and often the time I go in, uh, to my uh, uh, the parent house, where I was raised there. I'm um, living in Tokyo right now, but the, uh, the we used to live in, I used to live in Mie, and uh, go, going to Mie, uh, the week, uh, I ride bullet train, and the, of course, and sometimes uh, we get nervous, and you know, on those uh, the uh, the traveling, and the and these two uh, children uh, may be exciting when you uh, travel, but at the same time a little bit uh, the nervous, and and so actually I did not have the uh, precise uh, character setting or scene setting. So we are the ones who kind of imagined too much, and the. We even talked about the slavery and or the and bad people who want to use their uh, children who left their home, escaped from uh, from home, and the uh, they, the bad people took them to their advantage. So that kind of thing we talked about, but it seems not. So um, it seems. Uh, so uh, that this metaverse type of initiative was really successful. Uh, so we were uh, actually uh, did not. Uh, you actually did what the, uh, you want us to uh, think. So and what will be your next uh, the work? Next work will have more character settings, but at the same time, what they feel, I mean, the uh, the what the feeling or emotions or thinking that the viewers will have should be amplified by the viewers themselves. So, uh, so you live uh, close to the sea? Yes, actually, yes. So it's like a kind of documentary of the the writer, but at the same time, the the, uh, the, the perspectives of the world uh, tonality is totally different uh, from the from it. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Next is Isam Kaneko from uh, Tama Art University. Uh, the the work the title is the Balloon Catcher. Hello. Oh, could you introduce yourself briefly? I, I just finished my m master's course of uh, Tama Art University. My name is Isaku Kaneko. Okay, so let's uh, see the trailer.
Hey, so, Kaneko san, you are repeat applicants of uh, ISCA. So, when I, when we see your video, we can tell that it's yours. Now, we already had discussion, you were in uh, my team at Ukawa san, do you have questions? Uh, so this balloon catcher, I, I think you have your Kaneko-san has his own world. So we, we understand his world. So it's very comfortable. It's a video created, directed by a Japanese student, but it almost looks like a um, yeah, creation by uh, someone in Europe, you know, who we don't know. So it, it really looks exotic to us. So. Where does it come from, this uh, sense of uh, aesthetic sense of your work? There's no Japanese atmosphere at all in your creation. Well, it's not like I don't like my country or anything. I don't know. Well, long time ago, I probably saw some uh, photo book, uh, different buildings of Europe and the uh, scenery, and I probably liked it. And just seeing the, the scenery, picture of places I've never been to, and somehow I felt close to those scenes. So that imaginary exotism, and that's probably at the foundation of your video. Uh, Hirano-san, as an animation creator, you create this kind of a, a imaginary fantasy type of works, but uh, uh, Kaneko's one is sort of like different from yours. Yeah, it's kind of like a heavy and uh, contour that goes out the border. So it, it's really bold way of uh, making the film. I, I don't know how you came to those, that methodology. It's just just really strong contour. How did you come to that? When I thought about what kind of video I wanted to create, and rather than static picture, when things are moving, I just wanted to um, instill some sort of a dynamism. So the main character interacts with the, his world. So within a character, rather than just uh, well being within a character, but the character want I wanted the character uh, to just go out of his body. And I thought just if I uh, make the line out the line stronger, then I thought the character would look like he's uh, getting outside of his uh, border. So I, I just tried it and uh, it kind of like worked. Okay, so the interaction with others is demonstrated by the visual elements and that, that's amazing. Your video, the former one was I think a locomotor. So locomo locomotive person, and this time this is like a frame person. So basically you describe a person with a head. Head is something else, not a human head. And a locomotor, I, I think you wanted to try lots of things in it, but this uh, axe person, well, how did you come up with this idea of like axe man? Well, I first uh, tried to think of what sort of character would be interesting. And visually, I wanted to have some big impact, so it was really simplistic. And then having an axe for head, what would that mean? Uh, we all have faces and the people get first impression uh, from the way you look. And then I just thought if there's someone who had an axe for his face or head, what sort of person would he be? So axe man, if you see him from a distance, he would look scary. So I thought uh, there needs a character who looks at the 
Axeman. So that's why I uh, put in the balloon man. So the Axeman could uh, burst, make him burst. And so, so that's how I developed and expanded my world in the video. Okay, so you, will you continue on this series? You'll create a man with an object. Well, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But if I, yeah, for the time being, I think I will continue to make man with uh, some strange head. Well, Ishinomori Shotaro described a uh, masked rider and uh, other monster. And so, so it's like an imaginary mystery drama. And, and, uh, your video looks similar to that. So it's like a fusion of uh, materials and the human beings. I, I think that's your way of expression. That's great. It's kind of like a European style, but the characters are a, a bit more like a Japanese monsters. So I think that's very unique. Wonderful. Thank you. And your animation techniques are very refined. I was talking to him yesterday. He measured robot engineering. And that's why that makes sense now. So how, what, what's, how did you come to this? OK, so if you look back on it, you are a robot engineer. And why are you doing this now? When I graduated high school, I was interested in robot and animation, both of them. And back then, I thought robot engineering was more interesting. So that's what I studied at university. And after four years learning about machines, I started the feeling that I wanted to just create something myself, just just create something out of my my feeling, myself. And then I decided, OK, I would do animation. OK, so eight minutes up. So let's look forward to a, some kind of man with a strange uh, head next year. Thank you. OK, from uh, Tokyo Geidai, Tokyo University Art, the Nensawa. Well, due to his work commitment, he's not able to, she's not able to attend today, but we received her video message. So uh, the title of the video is Strawberry Candy. Uh, please watch the trailer. Xiao I'm E. Nensawa. I directed the Strawberry Candy. Thank you very much for the nomination. When I look back on it, uh, there were many challenges in creating the video. First of all, the viewpoint, standpoint of this film, I didn't, I struggled to decide on it. First, I wanted to make a documentary animation, and uh, I thought I would interview those who have the experience of uh, uh, being uh, um, molested or abused as children. But that sort of documentary would not communicate, it, communicate what I w w wanted to communicate. So I referred to lots of uh, videos and documentary and other videos. And then finally, I decided that I would make it a diary of children to express or show uh, these horrible uh, stories. And then I wrote the script and I uh, looked for a voice actor or actress and I thought my cousin's voice would be nice. So I went back to China in summer uh, to record her voices. But because my techniques are not good enough, I was not able to use the sound in my film. So I was in, I was totally dis disappointed. I didn't have time to go back to China to record the voices again. But actually, my mother took my cousin to Japan so that I was able to record the voice. I really am grateful to my mother. And then 
Of course, the uh, creation movie making process was really hard and challenging. I chose uh, colored pencil, so uh, painting, drawing it took a long time. The final one month, I was staying at school and I was losing sleep, but I'm so glad I was able to complete in the end. Thank you. Okay, sorry. I said uh, the title was Ichigo Mochi, but uh, it's actually Ichigo Ame. It's not the, the strawberry cake, it's strawberry candy. But anyway, well, this really has strong impact and uh, uh, makes you feel depressed. So she said she kind of interviewed, so she interviewed children, and then it's not really documentary, right? But from the interview, she created, well, I first thought this was a coming out of her own experience, but it was not strictly documentary, but it's based on interviews. And then really communicating uh, these uh, feelings and emotions through this work, I think is amazing. And uh, something that uh, people hid, um, the memories of the childhood, and then the memories start to fade, and then the gradually memories were distorted, either distorted or the memories are true to what happened. And then so I think her film was focused on that uh, uh, fragile point as well. Well, we really will look forward to one day directly talking to her. Okay, so next uh, nominee from Tokyo or Gages University, Tokyo Art University, the Shukuchin, the the title, please. So I picked up the worm. Listen, please. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, wonderful background of June. At school, this is the Nabe party. We have uh, joined with everybody else. We had a party. Can you introduce yourself briefly? Yes. Sorry. So I get it up the worm. This is a title of my production. Currently, I go to the animation department of the Graduate School of Tokyo University of Arts. I'm the, on the second year. Hello. So let's uh, watch the trailer. Earlier, with respect to strawberry candy, it was built up based on your own experiences. But I don't think uh, this story was uh, based on your own experience. Exactly. This production is uh, based on my experiences in Japan being a foreign student. Worm, so how did you come up with this idea of using worm? Well, every day I go to school from home on the street, on the staircase, I always watched the worms. Always, it was located there on the same ex place. It was already dead. Every day, I watched it. In those days, that was after immediately after the arrival in Japan. I felt the distance with the people living in the urban city 
and my own lifestyle was the repetition of everyday life. And there were some obstacles. And I wanted to look for the exit of the tunnel. And I was watching the worm. And I have uh, used this uh, worm as an analogy of myself. When I was in China, I used to pick up the worm if I saw a dead worm. But when I came to Japan, I do have the collection of the worms, you know. After I came to Japan, there are things which do not change. For example, the dead bodies of the worms. And the white door on the street, it doesn't move. Nobody touched it. I thought about those sceneries, unless I pick it up. What's going to happen to this worm, and how the worm is going to remain on this street? That was a question. That was uh, the conception of my idea. A little by little, it hit us. I was very much impressed with this uh, work. As you explained, the worms, you have found such perspective and idea in the worms. I was very much surprised. Do you usually find something on the streets, or do you try to find something on the streets? It is um, very poetic. Do you also write the poem? What are you interested in poems? Yes. When I created this work, the, you mean the poem or dead, death? No, poem. Oh, sorry. The same pronunciation. So, so uh, it uh, depends on how you understand that the pronunciation is different, whether it is fat or dead, because of the same pronunciation. If you are asking whether I'm interested in poem, yes, I love poems. The book uh, you found in the production is uh, from China, that's written by Hokuto san, very famous author. What's important about this was the illustration, the very high level of design, something which reminds me of Sanrio character in 1980s. Do you know Kitty? Kitty Chan? Hello, Kitty? In 1980s in Japan, uh, there were fancy goods in Japan. So the foxes uh, were written in many ways. Fancy goods in 1980s, and the illustration you have created reminds me of those uh, illustrations. The homesick type of illustration. On the contrary, this uh, fox was impersonalized and looks like a uh, you do you know uh, we try to impersonalize some animals to express other uh, humans. This one, do you know a uh, fox? Yes. What about the worm? Uh, to you, what is the meaning of the worm? Sorry, I don't think I am able to uh, hear your sounds. Oh, your worm, the worms. To me. What is, uh, how did you use uh, the worms as the metaphor? Well, to be honest with you, 
unconsciously I picked up the worms. In the seminar in the university, I was also told the same thing by the professor why I selected worms. And I thought about it. Maybe the worms living inside of the earth, but they appeared on the concrete. So leading fox shares are the same essence with the worm. Wonderful. Because I came from the mountain to uh, the urban city, just like the fox. So the home uh, country and uh, new country you moved. So we were able to analyze how you conceived this idea. So the, uh, based on your own uh, memory and experiences, I do have the very strong attachment. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Next is from Kyoto City University of Arts, Hikuto Kai. The title is Shuka. Mr. Kai, please. Hello, thank you. Good afternoon. Can you introduce yourself briefly? I am with the video department in Kyoto City University of Arts. My name is Kai. And I was interested in t picking up the uh, frames out of the video. So we uh, shot each uh, film uh, frame differently. So taking uh, one frame by one uh, frame, that's a very time-consuming process. Kai-san, uh, was uh, he in your team? Yes. In Uga-san? Well, it looks like uh, this is the action movie by the Tangerines, the first experience. I like that uh, expression. Very uh, funny and interesting. But this kind of action movie, did you have uh, this kind of idea from the beginning? You want to take the action movie? In a very short video, I like the emotional one, but sometimes chase scene and action scene a lot of uh, excitement and adrenaline goes up. Those types of the excitement is something I'm also interested in. And there are a lot of uh, producers and directors who are uh, quite uh, expert in uh, emotional one, but I wanted to do the different things. Why tangerines? Why did you select the tangerines? So I wanted to create this as uh, the zombie movies. Maybe I should have used the uh, zombie movies, but uh, since uh, there were no film which uh, sh shot uh, tangerines as uh, the leading part of the uh, zombies, because nobody has done that, I gave a try. The rotten level of the tangerines, how did you control that level? 
it's up to the natural uh, written, uh, written, uh, process of the tangerines. So he was a member of Ukawa group, so we had the conversation yesterday. So at this time, uh, you are going to share your secret and the inside uh, story. The tangerines, uh, rotten, and a lot of uh, flies coming o over the tangerines. In the condo I live in, I converted one room t uh, for the scene because uh, there are a lot of uh, tangerines and they were all rotten and 18,000 yen is the rent, but a lot of uh, flies and uh, cockroaches. Um, a beautiful uh, room, that's a friend's uh, room, not mine. 18,000 yen, that's a cheap rent in Japan. So, so many uh, flies and cockroaches in my room. So zombie is uh, located in the department of the uh, discarded, abandoned uh, town. So you are able to express this in the room. What has to be emphasized uh, here is, as you said, comments, rotten tangerines can um, make uh, the other pair tangerines bad. It's uh, the word always uh, said by Kimpachi Sensei, whether you are going to accept those rotten tangerines or uh, get rid of tangerines. I recommend that you exclude those rotten tangerines. That's painful. So the traces of uh, the tangerines and there are a lot of uh, juices. So gunman, uh, tangerines, they try to, he tried to uh, shoot uh, the other ones and take in time. How many days did you take for this production? For shooting, the uh, uh, tangerines go bad so uh, quickly, 15 days. How many tangerines did you use altogether? For shooting, we, we shuffled once, maybe the total 150. What is the production cost? 550 million yen. Well, tangerines cost me 10,000 yen or so. But the last scene, in that grandiose ending, 13,000 yen was spent for that particular one frame. So there were some other fruits as well, yes. So a lot of pressure for your cheap rent. A month worth of rent and the similar production cost with the rent. What is going to be your future work? Again, frame shooting. I selected tangerine at this time, so next time I wanted to select the different uh, theme, maybe Dorian, very rare fruit. You cannot leave your in your apartment if you're going to bring the Dorian. Dorians stink, smell. So using the very uh, fresh uh, fruits for uh, frame shooting is very difficult. Why are you attracted by the frame shooting? Originally, I was concentrating on physical, real video taking, but uh, there were a lot of instructions I have to give to the cast members and a lot of uh, time and work. But I wanted to do the video or the film. So I thought about it. If it were uh, the frame uh, shooting, uh, the articles or the dolls uh, can uh, stay with me no matter how long it will take because they are not the humans. Yeah, correct. Very reasonable. That makes sense. The fact that you didn't select Dorian uh, was the key to success. Thank you very much, Mr. Kai. Thank you.
Okay, let's go to the next work. Next work is uh, made by Ryusei Hashizume from Wasabi Melon, and he's from Osaka. Good afternoon, and please introduce yourself. So my I work is titled Oasis, and the, um, I'm the representative of the group called Wasabi Melon, and I'm Yusei Hashizume. Nice to meet you. So we'd like to take a look at the trio of Oasis. is a planet with miracles. It is undergoing big changes. Abnormal weather has caused the collapse of the ecosystem. Large creatures such as elephants and whales and small ones are losing their habitat. Therefore, we developed animal AI to observe and protect the ecosystem more closely. That's Savior. Yeah, Even though this is done by the students, but uh, the CG is so astonishing. I'm already pissed off. You shouldn't use such a word to nominate a work. You shouldn't. But I think he is trying to commend you. So uh, be assured that he is trying to uh, praise the work. I, th I thought this is really great. And when Shota-san said that the uh, they asked for the comment. I thought it's almost like a National Geographic. It's realistic. So when it comes to the reality, I think this is really, really real. But when I take a real look at them, I, th I thought that the, uh, the it was uh, good uh, because uh, this has been nominated because of the COVID-19. And the, I think uh, all the world movements have been put into pause due to the COVID-19. And the, I think uh, we are now trying to think about the green recovery. So the coexistence between the city and the green or nature have been started to be talked about a lot. And I think uh, you are also uh, the one of the early uh, initiative of this. I actually didn't think about that. But a uh, theme uh, for our graduate work, uh, graduation work is AI, and so AI was the theme. So of course, the futuristic technology was set as a theme for the uh, graduate to be. So the endangered species and the combination was the AI uh, was the theme I came up with. So endangered species can include a human being, right? <laughs> so you are not interested in this uh, in this topic, right? But anyway, the theme of AI is connected to the environment protection or awareness about the uh, the nature and the. Observing the nature, and you made a really realistic CG. So you decided to use motifs such as frogs. And how did you come up with the, uh, the selection of these motifs? And I did the uh, the research thoroughly and looking into the issues of the environment and also the indigenous species. And I picked up the frog because uh, do we uh, that it, we are familiar with the frog. You see them a lot around you, and they, I think uh, this is be going to be a good uh, thing to make you think about the environment. And I kind of think that the frogs have a facial expression because they when they blink their uh, ears, it looks kind of cute. So I thought that they, they have facial pressure. And we have whale 
elephant at the end of the movie and the sometimes they are over fished in the past and also there has a comparison between the uh, the size and also land and also water so that is why we picked these uh, the animals or creatures we have lots of trees and flora and the fauna and so it seems as the environment itself it looks like a character uh, is the main character and often the time the number of assets is really large so sometimes people give up due to the too large number of assets to depict uh, the the nature yeah i understand the number of assets is quite huge but uh, i thought that it's doable and pre pre production the at the time of the uh, the planning, at the time of the pre-production, I confirmed that this is doable. We can do this. That is why I I endeavored uh, for this. So uh, here uh, at this uh, for this work, I really uh, looked into the feasibility at the time of the pre-production. And they, they uh, discover the fountain of the life at the end. And what's the metaphor that is implied when you decided to use the fountain, the spring of life? I'm not director, I'm representative of these groups. But anyway, our group members think that the, we need to protect, for example, the eggs of frog. And these are the things that we need to protect. And that is why uh, we uh, kind of decided uh, to use the uh, fountain of life. So the DNA preservation and also the species. And the wasabi melon. Also, uh, they created the work called Once Again, and uh, that uses a robot, right? I remember your previous work. At the time, the quality was also very good. So Wasabi Melon Unit, your uh, team, you always together in the university. At the time of the work titled Once Again, uh, this team was created. We really just don't want to have the quality, good quality of the work. So at the time uh, we, when we worked uh, for the once again, we kind of got united and we decided to do the, uh, the creation for the graduation work as well. And we have eight members. So, but anyway, uh, the, we wanted uh, them uh, to work for us, but they didn't come. But anyway, uh, they are great members of the people. And uh, thank you very much. This has been the end of the the talk, so eight minutes were not enough. We wanted to have longer talks with the nominees. I touched upon this before, but the, often the time right now, the entertainment has been come into the uh, the online and the 3D, uh, 3G, CG has become into the new uh, layers, I believe now. So game engine, metaverse type of space is now available. Avatars uh, will be put into, so yourself will be put into as an avatar into this space. And so this uh, concept of the space has been changing like that. And also hand written animation has the liveliness and the sense and emotions and the those kind of uh, uh, this reality and the handwritten uh, the type of a thing it has been has uh, has uh, stand the contrast 
with them then. So we, I think the, uh, the nominated works reflect that situation in the world uh, uh, after COVID-19. So I think uh, this uh, selection process or discussion for uh, picking the awardees were really uh, fruitful. Yes, we have various works, including a handwritten, very simple handwritten works submitted in 2020, which is a surpri nice surprise to me. And we also had great works using sophisticated CG. So there's refrigeration and evolution. And then we have the young people inheriting their past uh, past, but then uh, they going into the new phase. Maybe we are at the transitional phase. You know, so we have many people from different countries, even though this is domestic category. So I think it's time to finish up the behind the scene talks. And we have introduced all the uh, digest version of the nominated works, but we have the full version available on the website. All those works are really powerful. So please pick, take a look at them at your leisure for this uh, for those full versions. And 4:30, we are going to have the awarding ceremony. Award not only the awarding ceremony, but we are going to uh, have the performance by the Syria, uh, which is the uh, the world famous futuristic. Uh, performance group, and we are going to have Mina Lima special live talk. Uh, f um, the, f the famous for as the graphic designer for Harry Potter series. So please continue to enjoy SK2020 programs. Thank you very much. See you soon. So we are going to have the Shiro A performance very soon.
人と物人と情報をつなげ新たな価値を生み出す知的創造交流の場ビジネスパーソン研究者クリエイター一般生活者多様な人々が集まり人と技術を結びつけ知恵とアイデアを交換することで製品やサービスから文化や人材に至るまで新しい価値を創出面白いをコアバリューとしてナレッジイノベーションを生み出すための施設と機能を最高の立地に実現都市開発の新たな形を作り上げ現在も進化を続ける知的創造交流の場それがナレッジキャピタルなのです
That is all. Hello, everybody. I hope you enjoy the performance by the new future entertainer by Shiro A. I enjoy the live show very much. Integration of all the elements. We are not sure which is real and which is not real virtual. I was very much impressed, and I hope the audience could enjoy the same live performance feelings through live streaming. Thank you, Shiro A. Allow me to introduce myself. I am acting as the MC. My name is Shuzo Shioda. I am one of the judges of ISCA. I also run the business Polygon Pictures, CG animation company. I am quite a lamer in this area, but in the past several years, I was assigned as the MC without any reason. And I accepted that offer every year. Let's see how it turns out this year. Please cooperate with me today. Every year, 
ISCA demonstrates and show the uh, works on this uh, stage. And uh, we will have a lot of people gathered here, including the nominees. But because of the pandemic this year, unfortunately, for the first time, this is going to be the full virtual session today. We do have a very uh, good uh, big theater, but no audience. We need to maintain the high level of tension without any audience. So everybody on the YouTube, be sure to send us your comment to give us your aid and support. Now they then, oh, I now remember. This Grand Front Osaka, the core facility knowledge capital is the place for creating and exchanging uh, the wisdom and knowledge to discover the young talent and foster them, have the exchanges with overseas so that we'll be able to provide the stage for the young people to be active on the world stage. Especially for university graduate school and technical colleges, we are holding this Creative Award ISCA. This year marks eighth meeting. This consists of three sections, domestic video contents, international video contents, and digital contents. In spite of the pandemic altogether, from domestic market, 53 schools, 306 works from international market, 69 countries, 615 works altogether, more than 900 works are the contestants. We are going to make the announcement of three sections of prizes. And starting at 4.30, graphic designer of Harry Potter, Mina Lima, will come on live. Uh, please uh, continue to turn on. Now, General Manager, Policy Advisor to the Cabinet Office, in terms of the science and innovation, Mr. Takuya Nomura is going to give you the purpose of ISCA, as well as the introduction of the judges. Mr. Nomura, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Shiota. I am Nomura. I'm with Knowledge Capital. It's before 5 o'clock on 5th of December, two hours ago. Hayabusa, too was successful in detaching the capsule, and capsule is to come back to the Earth after six years' absence. This marks eighth meeting in ISCA. So during the past eight years, Hayabusa was uh, on the orbit. I think it was in 2010, Hayabusa number one went into the atmosphere and burned down. That was a grand finale at this time. They detach the capsule and then continue to go on a trip and journey to the next planet. Indeed, that was the innovation and advancement of science and technology. We are lucky to have this ISCA meeting on the same day. Knowledge capital consists of the science and technology integrated with art and design different disciplines, but there will be the overlapping of uh, those different uh, disciplines. And we are lucky to hold this on this very commemorative moment. Now, ISCA 2020, as Mr. Shioda said, for the young people, we wish to give the support and ear to foster their talents. The digital content and the films and the videos I hope we will be able to de develop those uh, talents, young ones, who will be quite active in the future on the international communities. Not only that, with the videos or the content, creativity they learn, imagination power they learn. I am sure will contribute uh, to not only Japanese society, but also the international society. We are faced with uncertainty and intransparencies in order to create a new civilization and the culture. Creativity and imagination you learn from those experiences can be utilized very effectively. This is the reason that Knowledge Capital planned this ISCA and continued this event in the past eight years. This is indeed one of the main reasons for this. 
I hope everybody, young people, will be able to learn a lot from those experiences, video and film. If you have the uh, smartphone, and if you are able to use the shared animation, you will be able to send those messages to the world. Because of those reasons, new creativity, new ideas, new concepts, and innovative technologies and scenarios are needed. On the part of ISCA, we hope we will be able to continue to do the same, to tap into the development of the talents and foster those talents. So much so. There are a lot of uh, organizations, sponsoring organizations of ISCA to recruit the contestants of the film department and the professors in the video departments of the universities and the technical colleges in the world have cooperated with us a lot. So once again, we are now witnessing the opening of ISCA, although a bit different nuances, but this hope uh, will be the new age of ISCA. Now then, I would like to introduce you the judges. First, domestic video contents. Chief Judge, Genzai Artist Domune Representative, Mr. Naohiro Ukawa. Hello. All of the sudden, Roy Gun and Shiota san had a very high level of the tension. I hope I'll be able to catch up. Mr. Ukawa, um, Mr. Matsumoto Toshio uh, acted as a chief uh, judge, and after he passed away, you succeeded his place. Domu is the live story studio. I've been doing this in the past 10 years. In Shibuya Park, uh, Parko, yes, on the ninth floor, I opened the same uh, immune studio. Originally, I uh, was uh, hiding my mouth uh, by T-shirt. Everybody's now wearing a mask. So I think I am uh, the originator, so super domune. Well, as I talk with uh, Mr. Ukawa, uh, that is going to be not going to be the end of my talk, so let's uh, stop. The second judge, acting as the MC, Mr. Shuzo Shiota, representative director of Polygon Pictures, CEO. Mr. Shiota, thank you very much. Every year you are attending as MC, your position is very important. So I am asked to do the same as MC. Your company, Polygon Pictures, I'm sure it is well known, the representative company of Japan, 3DCG company, well known to the world. Because of a pandemic, I'm sure your business has difficulties. But it seems that you are changing the way you work. And on the full remote system, you will be able to have a lot of communication. For two months, full remote system, 300 employees, including the attempts, 400 people were working. And after the lifting of the emergency lockup, uh, we found that remote communication is indeed feasible. But there are a lot of people who will be able to do the same work by 100%. Now, less than 40% are in our office, and the rest are on the remote. Landscape is completely changed. So for ordinary CG companies, they work very late at night. But uh, I believe uh, you are doing very uh, fine. Yes, creativity uh, can be uh, exhaustive and uh, taking too much time uh, is not good. You need to take a good sleep in order to have a better creativity. That's what we've been doing in the company. Wonderful. Thank you. So MC and judge, lots of luck. Thank you. Well then. Mr. Ryo Hirano. Mr. Hirano is the short version animation author and cartoonist. Mr. Hirano, Fantastic World and the other works 
you contributed. And the way you demonstrate animation, illustration, and well, comic books, and the picture, and a lot of uh, different tools. And last year, I participated in the movies or the performance, acting as an actor. So in addition to animation author, I am doing whatever I can do. Yesterday, you said you are going to move your house to Nagano. Yes, because of the pandemic, I am all by myself doing my work at home. Better uh, to leave Tokyo and try to find the uh, house which has uh, the paddy uh, fields nearby. And I hope I'll be able to uh, lead uh, the different life together with uh, Mr. Shiota. And uh, you, very powerful judges. Mr. Hirano, you are so soft, soft touch. Such a feeling is needed. Thank you. Another judge, Superstation producer, Ms. Yukiko Tasaki. Superstation is one of the companies which runs ISCA. Before ISCA, we've been doing this eight times. Bakaja, uh, run by Kansai TV, and DVCC, you belong to the organization for the students. In the past uh, more than 20 years, uh, Ms. Tasaki has been acting as a judge from the beginning all the way. I'd I'm not going to ask how many, how old uh, you are at that time. I was uh, in a junior high school, so that was the sales speech of yours. Thank you. Next, Mr. Toyonori Takahashi, who is the director of Knowledge Capital Association, and also he uh, works with the uh, Oryx which is one of the sponsoring organization. He is the representative of Kansai of Oryx. Thank you very much for coming. No, uh, that's funny. Being a director and a representative of Kansai, you are very funny. From the start of the knowledge capital, I have been talking with the concept as well as the business plan of the knowledge capital together with you. Eight years have passed. Thank you very much for your assistance. Uh, so do I. Lots of luck. Thank you. So uh, your work is still about remaining as a judge. Next, digital contents category judges. Professor Michitaka Hirose who is the Research Center for Advanced Science and Technology Service VR Projector Leader of University of Tokyo. He used to be the professor of Tokyo University. He is on remote communication. Professor Hirose, hello. Long time no see. Professor Hirose beat the VR or AR you are an expert in this area. You are the typical representative of Japanese market. At, on the advisory board, you have been supporting us ever since uh, the start of this uh, ISCA. But you are not uh, skillful in the beginning when it comes to those areas of uh, technology. But yes, but uh, we are forced to do this uh, virtually. But uh, it seems that there are a lot of people who are attending physically, but because of my status, probably better to have the virtual appearance like this. Thank you very much for joining. Next, Mr. Satoshi Endo, Chief Researcher of Kadokawa ASCII Research Institute. Mr. Endo, hello. Mr. Endo. You have been the editor-in-chief of ASCII. 
Yes. And also now uh, I am uh, running the Kadoka Aski Research Institute as a researcher. Innovation Award is another award you are acting as a judge in. Digital is uh, highlighted in the market. It seems that all the world and the communities are now coming uh, into the online service, uh, just like a mat Matrix uh, movie. We are very much excited. Thank you. Next is Mr. A. Wada, artist and musician. Mr. Wada, hello, Wada. Electric appliances, old ones, of the ventilation and the, uh, the tubes of the TVs, those are the things you are using for the musical tools. Must be very hard to make the imagination. By using the function of the electrical appliances, we are using this. Yeah, you came here. Yes, I performed the electronics uh, fantastic. Nikos. That was the event, participatory type of the project. There are a lot of people who can participate, and the electronics or electrical license can be converted into the, to the musical or tools. And also, he was the awardee of the different award, Mr. Wada. Next. Ms. Shuho Fukuhara. She's an artist, researcher, and developer. The concept of the knowledge capital is represented by her, in a way. Hello. I just said uh, hello. Thank you. You are also the bio artist, and uh, you also acting as uh, the researcher in the research institute and demonstrated uh, your work. He, she was uh, the awardee of uh, the different awards, and starting from this year, she was assigned as a judge of ISCA. I'm a new one. Uh, no, no, you were making a lot of uh, comments yesterday. Yes. Yes, I wanted to say whatever I wanted to say. Thank you. And next, Knowledge Capital Award, judges. Three people. Yes, now I got the list. Digital Contents Knowledge Capital Prize judges, they are listed here. Tokyo University Graduate School of Information Science and Technology, Associate Professor Dr. Takuji Narumi. Next, Asia Pacific Institute of Research, the Chief Researcher, Dr. Hisanori Oshima. The third, president of ASP, Mr. Naoki Hayashi. Those three people in March joined in the Knowledge uh, Innovation Award. They will be making the judges on the Knowledge Capital Prize. Thank you. Now then, next, next international video contents. I would like to introduce to you the judges. First, Miss Cynthia Beth Rubin. Cynthia is a new media artist and also Seagraph Asia art judge. Cynthia, hello. Thank you for joining today. Yes, I'm so happy to be here, and especially very happy to have the 
from our international students is as an artist myself I'm just so inspired by what people are doing so it's great to be here among all of our ISCO friends and also with the students. はい、えー、今回も参加することができて大変嬉しく思っております、えー、特にですねこの海外映像コンテンツ部門の皆さんの素晴らしい作品を見ることができまして私自身もアーティストとして、えー、本当に感銘を受けました、えー、そしてまたこのイスカの顔なじみの皆さんとこういう形ですけれども今日は時間を過ごせて嬉しく思っております、はい uh, I'll do introduce シンシャさん now in Japanese、えー、シンシャさんはシンシャはい。Is Mr. Pat Lee. He is a comic artist and co founder of Toy Genius. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Pat Lee from Hong Kong.、Uh, really excited to be a part of ESCA again this year. And、uh, congratulations to everyone who、uh, put all their effort and time into working all the animation and, and the different films. So it's excited to be here again. はい、あの香港から参加しておりますパッド・リーです、えー、今回も今年もイスカに参加することができてとてもエキサイティングに感じております、えー、ノミネーションを受けられましたクリエイターの皆さん今回は本当におめでとうございますはい、えー、Looking forward to the session Thank you はい、では次続きまして The next judge The third judge Mr. Gilfred Stocker Mr. Stock,、uh, Stocker is the Also Electronica Artistic Director. Hello. Hello. I'm、Best、glad to see you, see you again. Yes. Best greetings from Austria. It's、uh, really wonderful, at least, to have the opportunity to participate in this great event、uh, with the video conference. I'm really missing being there with all of you. To experience the inspiring work of the young artists and、uh, also very inspiring possibilities to be in contact with them and talk with them. But、uh, I hope we can do some of it online as well. Thank you very much and good luck with this event. はい、今回オーストリアから参加していますこのコロナという状況でしたけれども、まあ、このリモートという形ではありますけれども皆さんとこうやって会うことができて大変嬉しく思っています本当でしたらですねあの直接参加して皆さんと会って若いアーティストの人たちの作品を直接お会いしたいところなんですけれども、まあ、少なくとも今回参加することができて大変嬉しく思っていますあのえっとアルスレアクセエレクトロニカ is the world renowned Media Arts Center. That's because of you, Stokasa,、uh, because of you, ALS has developed. And also, he is、uh, the judge of the world renowned、uh, w a b o r d Thank you, Stokasa. So much for all the judges. I would like to ask for your cooperation. Shota san, you have the floor, please. Hello, Mr. Nomura. Thank you very much. At this juncture, on behalf of the sponsoring organization, I would like to call upon the general manager of Knowledge Capital Association、uh, to say a few words. Mr. Tatsuya Nakano, please. On behalf of、uh, Mihara, The director of Knowledge Capital Association, I would like to say a few words as one of the three major awards now sponsored by Knowledge Capital. Thank you very much for coming to ISCA 2020. This is indeed uh, the uh, online communication, although it、uh, witnesses eight、uh, meetings. This is、uh, indeed the new type of the、uh, challenge. By making the best use of online, I hope we will be able to make a good connection with、uh, both、uh, home and abroad. 
for the contestants, students, judges, and the people who worked very hard at the back of the stage. Thank you very much. As for the total of the contestants, more than 900 works, double the number last year. The number from uh, the international community has increased because of the combined uh, mimic. Uh, on the contrary, we were able to witness the globalization in ISCA. Quality of the works has increased its uh, quality, and uh, any uh, work cannot be uh, considered better than the other. Uh, there are a lot of uh, works which have not come to the uh, nomination, but still wonderful and interesting ones. I hope uh, all the talented young creators will be able to uh, receive the stimulus uh, through this ISCA and uh, discover their ways. Although uh, because of pandemic, the future is unforeseeable, I hope uh, everybody will be able to demonstrate its creativity and tap the new world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nakano. As for the prizes and, uh, and awards for each category, I would like to introduce to you. I would like to introduce the prize and the certificates for each department. Sec the second and the third awardees, certificate and prizes are, are given. For the first prize uh, winner, the certificate and 100,000 will be uh, conferred. And for the grand prize winner, 300,000 yen and certificate will be provided. For the digital contest knowledge capital, certificate and 50,000 will be provided. For the domestic uh, con contents and Matsumoto Toshio award, awardees will receive 100,000 yen and a certificate. And this is the ISCA original trophies awarded to all the prize winners. Can you see something from here? Can you see the inside? Is it visible? What's contained here? It's tofu bean curd. Well, it's just like the shape of the tofu. So tofu and the, the trophy are pun because of the synonymous uh, phonetic sounds, tofu and trophy. In this tofu, uh, there are three buzzwords implicated here. One is interesting. Core value of knowledge capital is omoshiroi. It has the white corners, and this can bring about the brightness in front of your eyes. Second, it has the uh, corner, eminent talent. The third, you can become the expert, just like the bean curd, like this. So much for the pun between tofu and uh, tofu. And let's uh, move on to the actual announcement of the domestic contents. Okay, uh, we'd like to announce, uh, we'd like to actually show the highlights first of the nominated works for the domestic video content category.目の前に恵美ちゃんがいた。触ると小さくて柔らかい。グフィニカイ。フティ、アンガズビクツイ、グフィ、インデュ。
耳边说了什么。我问了小兔、小熊，和他说了什么。Is a planet with miracles. It is undergoing big changes, abnormal weather. Hi. Now we'd like to make an announcement for the third prize winner. We are going to have three arts for third prize. It's supposed to be the、uh, humor there, but anyway, make an announcement here. Keita Tsuji from Musashino Art University, Don, and also the second one is the So I picked up the worm, University of Art,、uh, Tokyo University of Art, and also from and Shuka by Ikuto Kai from. Kyoto University,、uh, Kyoto City University of Art. So these are the three content to be awarded the third prize. So we'd like to have the comment from Ukawa-san about the dome. So it seems that you、uh, raised the hurdle because you implemented some、uh, gang there. And I think this is the contrast between the city and the rural area. And also, you might feel homesick when you are studying away from your home. And I think this、uh, longing for the hometown and also the city and the emotional detailing have been depicted here. So this kind of perspective is kind of unique. And this is like a,、uh, the、uh, the movie depicting, depicting the lands. Big and the scenes, and I think in 60s those scenery or landscape movies were、uh, popular, and the, so the characters is followed, and then、uh, there will be a movie created, and this was done with the CG and the animation, and the, at the very last moment, and the, the character said that the and the, there was uh, uh, the sea、uh, at the place where I still live, so maybe and the, he will be depicting some of the, those、uh, this items. And because I understand that the,、uh, his parents' house is、uh, close to the sea. So, okay, the next one, and about this. So I picked up the worm. That's the title, and and the creator is from China, and the from and the. Home, maybe she got the homesick, and sometimes you use yourself during the the routines. But、uh, uh, this illustration, beautiful, uh, yet, uh, simple yet beautiful illustration, depicted this emotion. And the right now we have the co、uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Sometimes we lose connection with others, which leads to the loss of yourself. Hard to,、uh, the difficulty to be yourself and understand yourself because of the lack of the communication or the connection with the others. I think this is a grandiose theme, but I think a poetic description or expression of this. Uh, it was great, and we really liked this、uh, great work, which is beautiful. And Shuka is commented by Ms. Tasaki. And congratulations for Kaiksan. Actually, we had an online conversation with them, and the 15,000 yen is the rent and that he pays. And in that room, uh, uh, he had a difficulty because and there were flies. And the cockroaches because of the mandarin oranges. The usually、uh, the this、uh, the time lapse movie shooting is used、uh, from the clay figures, but the, he wanted to use this fresh item orange or mandarin, and 150 oranges are used, and it should have been a time-consuming effort. But the, as a result of that,、so、you had a great work like this. 
and not all, and also uh, we enjoy this. So the entertainment element here is uh, uh, astonishing as well. So everybody can enjoy just looking at them. Now I would like to have some words from the awardees. First, uh, Keita Tsuchi, Mr. Keita Tsuchi, please. Yes, I'm the director of the dorm. I'm Tsuji, and the, even though we had this COVID-19 situation, I am really grateful to have this, uh, to be able to have our work shown to the public. And not only that, we got the third prize, third prize. So I, we are really grateful. Thank you. Next. The counter this titles. So I picked up the worm and please uh, say some comments. The Shukuchin sa. So I am um, the uh, Shukuchi. I created the work called So I Picked Up the Worm. I'm really grateful to be presented with this wonderful prize. Of course, we, we wanted to have the conversation in person with you, but we have been able to attend uh, in uh, online. This might have been kind of unfortunate due to the COVID-19, but I think uh, this work uh, is a wonderful uh, the, uh, the event. So I'd like to say thank you to all of you. And next one is Shuka. So Mr. Kai Ikuto. Yes, I'm Kai Ikuto. And thank you very much for selecting our work for the third prize. And I'm very much honored uh, to have my work seen by many people. Thank you. And to those who are at the end of YouTube channel and also in the video, please give them a big hand. Next, we would like to announce the second prize of the domestic video content category. Please be ready for the announcement. So I think uh, we are going to use this format until the very end. So we are going to announce the uh, three second prizes. The uh, Miss uh, the Miss Kugen Yokai Talabi from the Akita Art University, and also this uh, the transparency dear by Natsumi Someyer from the Musashino Art University, and also the Oasis by Wasabi Menon and Ryusei Hasejumi from Hal Osaka. So these are the three awardees for the second prize. Now we'd like to have the comment from the judges, starting from Mr. Tataki so about the Yokai Terebi. So Kyu-san, uh, congratulations. I do believe that the, she is back in China. I am surprised because uh, that she is an international student who is from China, and I was really surprised and because she used the uh, Namahage, traditional local uh, the festival, and the the news is go, uh, the turned into a parody from the perspective of a yokai and also the drawing, so the illustration with really solid good illustration. So when she back, uh, she is back to Akita, I would like to see her developing more works based on Akita. So now we'd like to go to the transparent deer. When I first looked at this work, I thought that this is, has a really uh, the mysterious atmosphere is, is there. I have never seen this type of video. Uh, often uh, I have such a kind of feeling if it's an animation, but this is a real film. 
which is unique. And I had a talk with her, and and the Natsumi san and said that the uh, the actually the, she didn't prepare the script. However, uh, the, it was often spontaneous, and it, this looks like a documentary. But the, there is interviews inserted, and it sometimes looks almost like a fantasy. So the it's trans category type of work is very unique. So Someya-san already has. Uh, her own style already, and the Samyasan has been already working on the new work, which uh, is very, uh, which I really looking forward to see. And I'd like to have a comment on the Oasis. We had the backside story or inside story session, and the we had a talk with Sioda san. Uh, I mean, the, the Hashizume san, and I was really kind of almost pissed off because it was so sophisticated, even though it's created by the student. And this is the computer's graphics, and this is realistic, photo real, I would say, and it takes labor and time, and it's done by just like eight. A member of students, and it took just the four months, which is really surprising. So usually, even though you might conceptualize this, often the time you give up due to the labor that will require. But it seems that the, he did the pre-production and he did the simulation about the feasibility, and then he started to work on this. So how uh, they proceed with this is also astonishing, which started with the good pre-production session. So we'd like to have the comment with the RIDs. And the first, Kyugen san from uh, the Yokai Terebi. Thank you very much. I'm surprised because uh, the main message I wanted to communicate through this work is that the there are the, my interest from the perspective of the uh, foreign student on the this daily uh, interest that I had had wanted to be shared with the Japanese audience. And that's a simple motive, and then and I it has been realized. So it's very uh, surprising. And the Natsumi Somaya for the transparent dear. Thank you very much for the award. Through this uh, competition, I think uh, uh, have been renewed my commitment for the ne my next work, which I am already started to work. Thank you. And the third one. Um, Mr. Hashizume, on behalf of Wasabi Meron. Thank you very much for this wonderful uh, prize. I am really satisfied with this. Once again, I would like to give the warm round of applause. Next is domestic video content category, the first prize. Are you ready? Now, the first prize, there are two. The first one, Ms. Momoka Furukawahara uh, from Tokyo Zoka University. The title of the work is The Mark of Emmy. The second one is from Musashino Art University, Studio Kaba uh, Hikaru Morishige. The title is The Man on the Shore. So the two works received the first prize. Congratulations.
Now let's ask the judges for the mark of Emi who, oh me, me, I'm supposed to comment on this. Well, this video, I think it was amazing. Well, you should, you should see it. I don't know, I don't know if you can see from this, but I think you can understand, yes. It's very, very sensitive. Well, sensitive aged woman, how a young girl, their emotions and their sensitive feelings towards boys of the same age group. It's really pure. It's the opposite of a submeron, the, the style before. So just really using simple lines and the minimum use of colors to express a very complicated feeling of an adolescent girl. And then minimum sound, minimum but very effective sounds to come with it. So simplifying so much and it took a bold decision and also refined artistic sensitivity eh, to come up with something like this. It was really amazing. Congratulations. Next one is the man on the shore. Takahashi-san. So, Morishige-san and the team, I think this was a teamwork, right? Uh, congratulations. Well, starts from the scenery out the car window and I thought it was a real film but actually it was a computer graphics and I've never seen a video with this kind of structure so it was really refreshing a man in this suit space suit collecting strange creatures and then disposing of it so it's kind of like sense of despair for the future of the man. That's what I felt. And I heard that you used game engines to create this film. So I think from now there'll be many expressions and broader range of expressions using uh, that sort of tools for computer graphics. So I think it's innovative in that way. So please continue to do good work. Congratulations. Thank you, Takahashi-san. Now let's hear a few words from the winners of the prize. First, Ms. Furukawahara for the mark of Emi. I'm very happy. Thank you very much. Well, things I wanted to do, uh, things I wanted to describe, the, the curved lines of women's body and uh, complex feeling of women and I'm very glad that uh, what I wanted to communicate I probably successfully communicated that's why I got this award thank you very much next is the creator of the man on the shore uh, representing studio Kaba uh, Hikaru Morishige yes I directed this I'm Morishige Thank you for a very honorary prize. Uh, I understand that judges are from uh, uh, different specialities, and then we got uh, lots of different uh, opinions and comments from different angles, and that are very helpful for us for the future. Thank you very much. Well, it's very difficult to communicate this sense of excitement uh, in this venue. Okay, so we have grand prize and also Matsumoto Toshio Award. First, Matsumoto Toshio Prize is... Well, the chief judge of this award has been served by uh, Mr. Toshio Matsumoto. So we uh, set this award thinking that he would have chosen this work. Are you ready? So, um, Matsumoto Toshio Prize. 
goes to uh, Mr. Isaku Kaneko. The title is The Balloon Catcher. So Mr. Kaneko from Tama Art University. Congratulations. Knowledge Capital General Producer, Mr. Nomura, uh, could you comment on this film? Congratulations, Kaneko-san. So talking about this uh, Matsumoto Toshio Award, it's very difficult to choose the one for this uh, prize. Of course, some quality has to be high, needless to say. But we have to incorporate uh, Mr. Matsumoto's viewpoint, well, uh, something that he would have chosen. So we always struggle what to focus on to choose a film that Mr. Matsumoto would have chosen. In the 1960s and the 70s, uh, he was uh, the Japanese film director and the critics, and he was doing experimental filmmaking. He was a very good critic, and at the same time, he was creating very avant-garde and anarchy type of uh, films, very progressive works, if you like. So that's why we chose a film that was outstanding and different from others, and that's why we chose The Balloon Catcher. Um, Kaneko-san also uh, got the first prize last year uh, with the title of Rokomota. So Mr. Matsumoto chooses progressive work, but he was a really gentle, kind man. So uh, the, the video and the film, and he, his films always contained uh, some sort of kindness. So this balloon catch as well, the main character is an axeman, but the sadness and uh, sensitive feelings of the axeman was uh, really uh, communicated well in the film, the sadness of having to live in the balloon man. And last year was a locomotive man. So, so that was his work last year. So this year, when we saw this uh, balloon catcher, we could tell immediately that that was uh, Mr. Kaneko's work. So there was some sadness uh, in the sad air, but there was some sense of light of hope. So that was a common thread. And that's the reason why we chose this for Matsumoto Toshio Prize. Congratulations. Thank you, Nomura-san, for your comment. So, Kaneko-san, your words. Thank you. I'm Isaku Kaneko. So, thank you uh, for inviting me to ISCA last year and this year as well, once again. And uh, this Matsumoto Toshio Prize, and that's a really, really important award for the, for the event, and uh, I'm very glad and feel honored to get this prize. And... Uh, such circumstances, difficult situation. I would like to thank the organizers and event staff for holding this event online. Thank you. Congratulations. That's a nice comment, wasn't it? Well, my son should learn from him. Okay, so we only have a grand prize left for the domestic video content category. Are you ready? The domestic video content category, the grand prize, goes to Lee Niense uh, of Tokyo University of the Arts. The title of the work is Strawberry Candy. Congratulations. Well, it's so exciting, isn't it? Well, I actually said strawberry cake rather than strawberry candy. I made a mistake in the last session, so I was a bit nervous. But anyway, I would like to hand over to Ukawa-san uh, to say a few words and provide some uh, comment and review on this work. Yes. Yeah, we thought we were calling it strawberry cake, and it's actually strawberry candy. But anyway, it's, it's a very serious animation. If you watch this, you will know. So it's is some secret that people have. I think everyone has some sort of a secret that you could not tell anyone about it in deep in your mind. And that secret, because of the mechanism of the human memory, 
and it gradually fades away. For example, if you sustain some trauma, I mean, that's what this uh, uh, video describes, your childhood trauma, even a trauma, the memory of the trauma gradually fades away with time. So your memory and the story may be changed or distorted in their emotional workings to to edit or change the story. So that's what this uh, video, his her film describes. So a young girl who was sexually abused by grandfather, and then the grandfather would give her a strawberry candy. And so that was the memory that this film was about. And gradually, we don't know what's real and what was sort of imagination or distorted memory. And uh, this story actually is based on interviews of uh, people who used to be abused as a child. So it's almost like a coming out of secret memory. And uh, through this film, you are able to guide uh, the audience to the sensitive comp complex feelings of people with trauma. So that's something that short videos are supposed to be able to do. So that's why we chose this for grand prize. And congratulations. Okay, so Lee Nensa san we wanted to hear directly from her, but unfortunately she has uh, work to do today, so she is not attending the video conference. So professor of her university, Japan's uh, representative short anime film director, uh, Professor Koji Yamamura, is going to say a few words. Thank you very much, uh, Lee Nenzawa-san. It's, it's unfortunate she's not able to attend today, and it's such, such a great prize, and uh, so such great uh, judges. And, and anyway, um, I'm very glad that she was chosen. As you saw, that was a very uh, delicate uh, content, and I think she it, it was difficult for her to create this kind of film in China. So when she first spoke about uh, this, her plan in Tokyo, and I thought th this was a difficult thing to do, and she was not a very uh, social type, but uh, yes, uh, she did very good work in very short space of time and was able to create such great work. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for recognizing her great work. Thank you, uh, Professor Yamamura. Uh, we wanted to ask her more, uh, but anyway, congratulations. Okay, so the general comment of this category, uh, Chief Judge Ukawa-san, oh, Professor Koji Yamamura, that mean uh, Professor Yamamura handed over the microphone to me. I mean, he's such a great guy, and I feel nervous. So for short animation, uh, category. I mean, sh he he's such a representative uh, director, famous director in Japan for that field. So Lin San, I think, uh, learned uh, from him, uh, or we can tell. Uh, so the role or mission of short animation films are clear through that work. In 2020, the, this year, you will always remember. Uh, because of the COVID, and uh, you worked hard uh, under a COVID situation, and we are doing our work under COVID situation. So entertainment cannot be done in physical environment. So entertainment goes into the digital online world this year. Now, a physical world view, and then digital, so crossing reality, AR, VR, MR, and so on, XR, what we call in general. So reality is now n n shaken. Fantas fantastic expressions. How are those elements incorporated into video works? And so I think lots of uh, new methods and expressions are, are born this year. Uh, Travisco did live in Fortnite, so in metaverse environment, entertainment is now created and developing. And this time as well, 
uh, there were some works that are using game engines to create video films. So we have flat screen, that's image, but image is not just a 2D image on the screen. Finally, we are starting to understand the image is broader. Now, in this environment, what sort of world ISCA should pursue? So that's why we have digital content category as well after that. So these two worlds are going to integrate and be fused in the future. So the short animation, short animation film, that uh, segment will have a lot of value. For example, the mark of Amy, and then strawberry candy, and also uh, the picked up earthworm, and Dawn, all these films, they are describing worlds that can be only described and expressed by short animation films. So short animation films are very uh, good at describing uh, poetic and sensitive feelings and emotions. Okay, so oh, that's what I felt. I don't know what's going to happen to the COVID situation next year. I hope that there'll be vaccines so that we'll be able to meet with each other physically, not just online. Thank you. Thank you, Kawasan. So that's it uh, for the domestic video content category. Thank you very much and congratulations everyone for all the prize winners. Well, it was really diverse, the techniques and uh, uh, hand-drawn and uh, stop-motion and and also we are really ethnically diverse participants as well, although this is a domestic video content category, which I'm very happy about. Okay, now let's move on to digital uh, content category. Well then, yesterday we broadcasted digital content judge sceneries on live. I hope you enjoyed the uh, judge lives. So there were a lot of uh, heated uh, discussion amongst the judges. Before the announcement, please take a look at the digest version of the nominees in digital contents category. Now then, digital contents category, I would like to announce the winners. The judges are requested to come up to the stage. First, the third prize. Are you ready?
Digital contents category, five contestants are selected as the third prize winners. Akita Art University, Mr. Natsuki Shibuya, Anmin Ensemble, Tsukuba University, I.O. Inada Kazumi-san, Instant Sympathy, Musashino Art University, Uzeda-san, Blue Night, a poem. Fourth, Keio Gyutsu University Health Promotion Committee, Ms. Ayaka Sakakibara, Sony Kakerium. Fifth, Kansei Gakuin Daigok University, Ms. Nuna Terasaka, Candy is Crying. Those are the five winners of the third prize. The judges, let's hear your comments, starting from Endo-san. On instant sympathy and blue night a poem. First instant sympathy. For us after we get up in the morning until we go to bed, digitalization is surrounding us. The tweeters are analyzed all the way, and sometimes uh, there are a lot of discoveries by the students of Tsukuba University, very local one. Usually, uh, those are created from more marketing perspective, but the data was uh, collected and visualized in this format. As to the contents itself, positioning of the content itself was quite fresh. Let's see how they are able to develop the visualization of those data in the future. Next. Another one, Blue Night, a poem. They are using GAN, one of the AI technologies from the language to the graphics. From the wording, and there were some uh, production made in the past, but there were no intention recognized very clearly. Of course, probably they didn't uh, create this from uh, scratch. They used the library by using the state-of-the-art AI technology. Uh, they were able to apply this. Just recently, because of the boom of AI, the starter of this is Julie Lindon. As the computer develops and innovated, including AI, probably they might not go to the stage where they would be able to replace our mind. But these days, people say, yes, it is possible they replace our human minds. Probably there may be the future of the poem. Congratulations. Thank you, Endo-san. Wada-san, would you comment on Amin Ensemble and Candy is Crying? Amin Ensemble Shibuya-san, congratulations. Very beautiful and humorous work you created. So she is a totally off mode sleeping in orchestra. She is acting as if she is a conductor of the orchestra. Uh, that was quite interesting. The way you sleep on the bed uh, is uh, quite uh, least uh, defensive for the humans. And uh, this was utilized as trigger. So cute and humorous she created. On the other hand, the movement and the, it is synchronized with the sounds. How convincing it was and how much uh, you will be able to develop further and improve further. You uh, murmur and speak while you are asleep on a bed. Unconsciously, uh, they just uh, murmur and uh, say uh, something without uh, noticing it, and that might be quite interesting. 
the, this the defensive and uh, unconsciousness, and that's something I want you to delve into. Nightmare Ensemble is something I want to see personally. Uh, they feel a very bitter experiences from the nightmare. Congratulations on Candy is crying. Quite aggressive and uh, some uncomfortable, unpleasant feelings are well expressed here. So by using the ordinary equipment, Magritte module, those uh, middle-aged man characters were quite interesting. And the movements and quality and repetition, those elements were quite interesting. We may be able to go into the deep inside of the people. Although I was not able to exper uh, experience this, Maybe in a remote uh, setup, those are the types of the video we can enjoy even in distance. Under the pandemic, VR might be linked with the actual physical space by using the music clip she's trying to express differently from live, that's a music content, not uh, much from uh, the uh, live uh, performance, but a, a very active uh, quality. Thank you. Lastly, Fukuhara-san, Sonic Aquarium comments, please. Sonic Aquarium, Sa sorry, I can't pronounce her name, Ayaka Sakakibara. I'm tensed. Her work is uh, using the uh, golden uh, fish, and uh, there is the water tank, and uh, they would be able to learn the sounds of violin. And goldfish is able to swim in accordance with the tunes of the violin. So there is a new relationship created with the humans. There are so many different types of the goldfish, but the history with the human is very long. 1,700 years ago, there was uh, the mutation of uh, the fish. And from there onwards, in Edo period, the uh, samurai uh, runs uh, the side business to do with the goldfish. Looks like, in a way, this was a rather problematic work for me because we try to look at uh, those work uh, very human-centered. But for the organism and the living creatures, she is uh, proposing a new uh, thing uh, to try to find out the relationship with the humans. Thank you very much. The award uh, winners, let's hear their comment. Shibuya Natsuki. Ami Ensemble, Shibuya speaking. Thank you very much for giving me the prize. With a very sm a small starting trigger point, I was able to produce this, and I am very much appreciative and privileged that I was awarded with wonderful prize. Thank you. <coughs> Instant sympathy, I owe. Kazumi Inada, please. I'm a different uh, person, Oka Moto. Thank you very much for uh, your uh, prize. In a very small community, uh, we try to express this situation. I hope everybody can see the new perspective we wanted to express. We are very much appreciative that this point was well 
recognized by the judge. Congratulations, Inada-san, Okamoto-san. Who is it that? Please. Thank you very much to the judges, to the staff members. Thank you indeed very much. Sorry, because of the poor connection, we are not able to hear you very clearly. But I was able to understand your feelings very strongly. Sonic Aquarium, Sakakibara, Ayaka. Thank you very much for selecting my work. I am very much privileged. Iska people had an opportunity to appreciate my work. I am so grateful. I hope I will be able to brush up my uh, skill further. Thank you. <laughs> Lastly, Candy's Crying, Luna Terasaka. Thank you very much for giving me a wonderful prize. I am very much appreciative. I have uh, spent uh, six months to come up with this production. I am so glad that uh, you were able to have an opportunity to enjoy our uh, work to ISCA people and to professors of the universities. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to become a contestant. Thank you very much. So much for the five prize uh, winners. Please give the big hands to the winners. And on the YouTube, the audience, if you have any comments, please send us the message to the winners. Next is digital contents category. Second prize. Are you ready? Uh, somebody uh, echoed me by saying ISCA. Digital Contents Category second prize goes to Institute of Technology of Aichi Chin Hajik Yuji Fujishige. The title is Hajik. Bukara san, would you like to give the comments on Hajik? Fujishige-san, congratulations. This work, Hajik, uh, is uh, something you might have experienced in the childhood uh, gaming. As you can see here, balls or uh, those uh, gadgets in game and linked with the uh, digital. Those types of the games are available in the market but the important point for this work is in this pandemic period, we are looking at the screens because of the remote distance uh, communication. And uh, we are attracted by the screens and displays. But now he, she is coming back to analog to come back to the actual materialistic uh, product to put the new expression. And probably we need to stay home. And board games and those types of the games are now making the comeback. That's a positive area. We should not end with just playing the board game. Maybe the two players can be increased to four players, something which cannot be imagined by the humans. That's the type of the expectation I have to select this as a second prize. Lots of luck for the future activities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Fujisuge-san, would you like to express your uh, joy? My name is uh, Fujisuge from Aichi Institute of Technology. Thank you very much for giving me a prize. Because of the pandemic, uh, 
um, uh, uh, sorry that I was not able to uh, demonstrate in front of you, but I am so glad that this work is well appreciated by the judges. Thank you indeed very much. Congratulations. And please give us a comment and email. Next. I would like to make an announcement for the first prize winners of the digital content category. Digital content category, uh, we have two winners for the, the first prize. Honoka Ijima from Josai International University Media Design Lab Speculum and also A plus Makoto Amano from the Keio Gejuku University and the title is Unlabeled Camouflage Against the Machines. Now we'd like to comment from the judges. For Speculum, uh, Mr. Endo, please comment. And you might be able to feel this, even though this is the digest version of the video clip and the mirror is really primitive, but this has a high resolution and you are able to see things on here. And the, of course, even though we are in the digital world, the mirror is really powerful still. So you have uh, interaction device uh, did standing in front of something, and the ESCA had a similar presentation about this, but the mirror is unique here. Like it's wise selection, I believe, uh, uh, choosing the mirror, and the utilize the mirror very effectively. Uh, the you have the honeycomb shape here, but actually this is uh, made of magnetic, so you can place that and anywhere if uh, it's magnetically effective. So I think uh, this is again uh, the, it's unique because you can lay out them uh, almost freely. And the, there are staff members and uh, female and the male, but uh, I do believe that this is a kind of female touch as well, which is really nice as well. So I'd like to uh, encourage them to work on further. Thank you. So the, Mr. Wada, uh, the please come in on the and label the coverage against the machine. So Amano-san and the team members. Uh, congratulations for the winning the prize of the, the first prize. So it's, it's like a prov provocative uh, the film, and the, there are all these days in the fashion uh, apparel world they are talking about the sustainability and also the technology. So the, it's more like the second skin, and you're wearing the technology. And I do believe that this is the, uh, the technology-driven fashion. And also there are aspects of the fashion, which is uh, uh, you wear philosophy or values often the time wearing something. So you uh, state, also it's a fashion statement. So rock, uh, the techno, and the pop, punk, often the time you associate them with this, some certain type of fashion or the hairstyle. So you have the fashion statement, and uh, this is the 21st cent uh, century cyberpunk, I I would say. So it's a punk fashion in cyber uh, world, so it may be uh, interpreted like that. Camouflage is something we talk about, I mean, the uh, the supervising, uh, the surveillance, the capitalism under surveillance, often the time the ultimate purpose may be hidden when we are watched or surveyed uh, under the surveillance system. So even though it might be convenient, but often the time the data is collected and the centralized collection uh, is uh, kind of accumulated, so the coverage uh, can work against this trend with this some cyberpunk fashion. So maybe this is the front line of the uh, cyber fashion, punk fashion, and I'd like to see them on the runway. And so it's a, it's a cool thing 
thing, and even uh, to the extent that there may be errors produced. So, and I have been involved in this judging uh, panel, and often the time, uh, uh, actually, we did not see a lot of provocative or issue raising or challenging uh, work. So uh, the uh, this is the type of uh, work that I was looking forward to see. So please kind of have this uh, the kind of attitude, fighting attitude in your work. So, so I'd like to have a comment from Ms. Ejima for Speculum. I'm from a media design lab, Joseon International University. We are very greatly honored to receive such a great prize due to the COVID-19. Uh, you are not able to uh, actually feel or the uh, and the plague with the the work. However, and I'm very much pleased to be able to have this such a valuable experiences with you. Thank you. And I see, I see team member. And I think uh, it's real uh, sure real uh, uh, when this configuration of the two people. This is Amano. I'm uh, greatly honored to receive this and uh, the opportunity of ESCA. We would like to start the uh, the discussion and the conversation with regard to the social issues. So I hope that you have a high expectation on my uh, future works. So we will continue to have this against attitude. Please give them a, a big round of applause. We are going to have two prize, uh, two uh, prizes, categories, and we are going to announce the first Knowledge Capital Award. And the Knowledge Capital Award, it will be awarded from the perspective of the uh, first participant. And the category of digital content, Knowledge Capital Award, will be given to Tsuka Labo Haruka Yagyu from Kobe University Graduate School. The work is titled Shining Donation Box. And we are going to have the Associate Professor Narumi from the Tokyo University Graduate School, Information and Science Graduate School. So congratulations for the Knowledge Capital Award given to the Shining Donation Box. And of course, uh, this one uh, is based upon the engineering perspective and how we can make sure that the people do it uh, pleasantly and enjoyably. But at the same time, the donation is not just about feeling good. So there is another those uh, comment as well from uh, the judges. So uh, I like encourage you to go on further and the. Also, uh, take uh, another look at the aspect of donation. So I hope that you uh, continue to work on the production of such works. That was uh, great. Thank you very much. And Awardi Yagyu san, please make a comment. Yes, I'm from the Kobe University. I'm Yagyu. I'm very pleased to get this award on the judges and also the ESCAR organizing uh, committee members. Thank you very much for giving us this, such a great opportunity. OK, 
Okay, now we'd like to have the final announcement in the category of the Jessica content. We are going to make an announcement of the Grand Prize winner. That's the content category. Grand Prize winner is Kyushu Sangyu University, Tomoki Yakiyama. What you were looking at? Congratulations. Head of the judge, Professor Hirose in the digital category will make a comment. Congratulations, Mr. Yakiyama. This is actually the very straightforward and simple artwork. So what you are looking at is the title of this work, and you are really impressed by this title because this is a profound question, actually. The result, I mean the outcome, is not the picture, not the image. It is a it uh, falls under uh, those categories, and uh, no, uh, falls no uh, category like that. The work has been reviewed publicly, and the, those who have took a look at their session, you might remember the comments during the question and answer session, and there was a pause, silence at the time. So I do believe that the judges were thinking about the nature of this work. So I thought that this is a great thing because you have made us think really hard. And especially the, uh, the professors from the art said that the, it's really difficult to transcend the borders of the different art types, which is often difficult. I'm from computer science, so I had a different impression. The image and picture, the borderline between these, so video and the painting, borderline, and so we have the virtual reality or the, the augmented reality, and I think they are related to the cyber reality. So in the COVID-19, you have been experiencing many cyberspace as an alternative of the non-cyberspace, and also you are losing something even though uh, you have the screen or video images, but sometimes you lose something at the same time, so and you may be uh, de-sucked into the display, like Sakura-san said earlier. So we have many beautiful videos and which may have an advantage because it looks nice, but and this work grabs the mind of the judges, raise the problems, and not only the work itself, but also the creator. I think uh, the Yakiyama-san himself, uh, we have a high expectation of him. So art people and engineering or information type of people uh, should not be uh, divided into two, but uh, we hope that the, uh, there should be a comment from the art beast uh, person as people as well. So anyway, the discussion was very uh, heated. Uh, at the very end of the discussion, we continued the very heated discussion, and I hope that the, there is a, maybe a judge who wants to uh, talk, make a comment on this judge with art background. Yes, uh, this work 
when I took a look at that and the, we were wondering what we are looking at. So actually, it's a kind of face slapping type of experience and the, uh, my mind went blank at that moment. And the transcending or going beyond the borders, is that an art? Is that a new display or is that the new VR? So we didn't know. That was we uh, left an impression, but uh, you see the paint. The paint is familiar to you, and it's expressed using paint. So we had a difficult time because we are making judgment on something that we have never seen, and at the very uh, last moment, we decided on this. And we think that this, the, uh, the power of this art made us decide and, and also the hairstyle on the glasses that uh, Yakihara-san wears reminds me of some artist, if you know. OK, Yakihama-san. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, the choice. And thank you very much for the comments. And uh, I do believe that, the, uh, that there are many people who watched my work. And it's really a great honor. And the, I would like to work further uh, of the creation of the new works and the future as well. Thank you very much. And I thought that uh, some people will get kind of emotional or even cry, but they, it seems that the art is uh, really cool. Okay, we are going to have the overall comment on the uh, digital content. So I'd like to talk about myself first because I am uh, I always uh, look forward to SK, so I make sure that I uh, I make some myself available. I came from Sao Paulo uh, the last year and 15 minutes before the the judging uh, the discussion we, I arrived and that was the case of the last year and this year uh, we are doing this on a remote basis and. We have the uh, the venue and also the virtual reality, uh, and I am joining from Tokyo because I think I am the teacher of the virtual reality, so I participating virtually, and of course I um, the uh, the information technology professor and. And of course, there are many things that we can do virtually. And what we can do some, and the virtually and more interestingly is the thing that the ISCA uh, can experiment on. So I think uh, that's the thing that the ISCA needs to do. So that is the kind of a mindset that the, when I participated in ISCA judge panel, judging a panel. So before COVID-19, of course, we had many opportunities to have the, the exchange sessions and the parties. And often the time, I have been able to have the opportunity to have the conversation one-on-one -on -one with students last year. So, uh, But actually, using the virtual opportunity, we have been able to have the more one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, the communication virtually this year. And of course, the digital content area that we are involved in, often we have the, uh, the um, increasing number of the works based on the installations. Of, so uh, it was difficult often the time uh, to have the evaluation. But uh, actually with the Zoom, we were able to make assessment or judgments, even though we see virtually in the, some of the works have been able to 
be uh, have been able to be presented effectively uh, through Zoom. So those type of works have been uh, the successful this year in some cases. So I think uh, the power for our works emerges deep uh, and through those different environment or different situation of the society. And the, the message to the student is as follows. And the role of the earth is to raise awareness among the people. COVID-19, maybe you are an artist because due to this situation, people started to get aware of many different things. So Zoom interface have been experienced by many people and the, now I know that the, what the barrier means. So and the, through the net network, we interact with people and the in the and there is a communication between the real world and also the virtual world. So there are people who join virtually and those who in uh, in the venue, the physical venue, and there are communication uh, between them. And we need to be friendly to the people who are joining virtually and also those who are participating uh, the physically. That the word earns. So there are also the, the sometimes the demarcation between the rural and urban. So these are the thoughts I have been thinking about. And next year uh, there is there will be uh, the uh, the works that will tell us how we can potentially break through this uh, the the communication gap. So I think that's all for the announcement of the uh, digital content category. Once again, congratulations for the awardees. And also, we'd like to say thank you to the judges. Now we'd like to go to the international video content category awarding summary. So this year, as I said at the beginning, uh, there were applications from 69 countries, and uh, six uh, works have been nominated, very, very of high quality, it's, uh, the professional level, or maybe even better than uh, average professional. So six works n of nominated works, let's watch the digest.
Now, how did you like it? Just uh, looking at the short trailers, I, I think you felt it. Okay, so let's announce the prizes, prize winners. International video content category, uh, all the judges are overseas, not in Japan, so I am alone. On the panel, I feel really lonely. Please look at it. Oh, feel really awkward. That's not good. So everyone help me. Okay, so I'll still try to do a good job. Second prize goes to, are you ready? Now, uh, for the international video content category, uh, there are three works for the second prize. The first one is from France, uh, from Paul's uh, 3D and Creative School, uh, Mathilde Dugatin, Oran Lafla, and Hugo de Magalès, and Wassim uh, El Hamami. The title is Trois Mur et un Toit. And from uh, South Africa, from AFDA Cape Town, Yolissa Let's Ways Insight. And then from the UK, uh, from the National Film and Television School, the title, The Song of Lost Boy. The prize goes to Daniel Quirk. Congratulations. Now let's hear from the judges. First, uh, from Connecticut, we are connected to Cynthia San. Uh, your review on Troa Mu et Antoine? Final, sure. Yes. So, thank you so much for um, Troa Mu et Antoine. Um, it's a wonderful title because yeah. it implies that there's a missing wall and we're breaking through. So uh, this was just a wonderful story, uh, and congratulations on coordinating the whole team that worked on this, which I understand was during the pandemic, so very unusual. Um, it, this film brings us into exploring what fantasy worlds tell us about ourselves, what we, what we reveal as, as people, and um, a sense of going into a, another space. Um, this was done in a way that allows us to really wander into the imagination of what's on the other side of the wall and done with dazzling visual effects. Really, the colors shimmer, uh, the changes in scale bring us in and out of the story in different ways. And it gives us a glimpse into an imagination that we just lose ourselves in the dream world. So I really congratulate the whole team on pulling this off. It's easy to fall into very conventional modes of storytelling. And this team created a narrative that really goes beyond. It became very personal. And thank you. Congratulations on this. Hi. So. トラムエアントラに関しましては本当に素晴らしい作品だと思いました。タイトルはまず素晴らしいと思いました。まずは壁がなくなっていて、そして壁を破って次のスペースに行くというくだりです。素晴らしいストーリーが展開していたと思います。
対してそれを見る機会を与えてくれているようなストーリーだと思うのですテーマ自体も非常に素晴らしいと思いましたこういうテーマっていうのは通常は普通のストーリーテリングに終わってしまうと思うのですしかし彼らがやったことはそれを超えて何かを成し遂げたと思っていますはいありがとうございます先生 Thank you very much. Thank you, Cynthia. Next, about inside、uh, Jeffrey Stoker,、uh, please give your comments. Yes, sir. First of all, I can only say, wow, I'm really amazed. We have seen so much exciting work with high technology, and then we have this wonderful film that is going deep to the core. Of the most existential question what does it mean to, be, mean to be human? How can we deal with our fragility? How can we deal with the vulnerability of our existences, with our desires, and with our emotions? And I think in times like we have it right now, with all these big discussions about the impact of technology and also the pandemic, of course, the question about the human condition. Is most important, and this movie is doing it in an excellent way. It's really a masterpiece. Congratulations. Hi, I was a very good person. 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 人としての深いコアなところまで突っ込んで、えー、テーマを掘り下げていると思います人とは人間とはという存在論にも触れるものだと思います人間というのは脆弱でフラジャイルなものだということそしてどういう欲望を持ちどういう感情を持っているのかということを描写しようとしていますえこういう政策というのは今のような特にテクノロジーは非常にハイテクと言われているけれどもパンデミックに襲われているような時期にとって人間とはということを問い直すという意味でとても重要なことではないかというふうに思いました誠にエクセレントな傑作だと思いました Thank you, Jeffrey、えー、そしてパットさん、えー、the song... パットさん、uh, please comment The Song of the Lost Boy was really、uh, a very interesting piece of work because it, it has a lot of、um, a very interesting、uh, stop,、uh, stop motion animation. And I felt like it has this really cool, a very cool、um, idea of like, the way、uh, the director put it all together、um, and just really about、uh, the idea of like, losing, losing something that we're passionate about and trying to fi-、uh, find ourselves again. Which I think plays a very important,、uh, an important thing that we all have to experience and go through in our life、um, in one way or another. And、uh, it was just really beautiful, just the way、um, you know, all the dioramas and the, the way everything was set up,、uh, the moments of silence and the moments of、uh, the music. And it was really an inspiring piece. And I think that when you watch it, that、um, it is kind of like a tearjerker. Like you, you can kind of really. Feel the essence of the character, and、uh, not much is, or if anything, is really being said. So、um, the lighting was, was, really, was really nice, and the way the transitions moved all the way to the end was really, really well executed. So it was a very beautiful piece, and、uh, congratulations. It was, it was、uh, an incredible piece to watch. Hi. 私もこれは非常にしっかりとしたテーマをベースに行われているというふうに思いましたまたとても面白いなというふうに思いましたまた面白いエレメントがたくさん入っているというふうに思いましたしアイデア自体もクールだなというふうに思いましたそしてそれらの各々のエレメントを監督が非統合を制してうまく調整をしているというふうに思いました昔は熱情を持っていたものがそれがなくなってしまったしかしそれらを再びこれを取り戻すことができるそれをストップモーションのアニメを使って非常によく表していたというふうに思いますそれは誰でも重要な人生の経験としてまあパターンは違うかもしれませんけれども経験していることだと思うんですとてもビューティフルだと思いましたまた人が感じるようなジレンマも表現していたと思いますしサイレンスの状況はどうだったか
またミュージックがどのような形で出てきたかその一つ一つをとってもとてもインスピレーションに富んだ、えー、映像だというふうに思いましたこれを見てみますと本当にここに本質的な、えー、キャラクターが現れているということが何も言葉で語らなくても分かるというような気がしましたしまた照明も素晴らしいものであるというふうに思いましたし最後のエンディングのところまで行く、えー、移行のところトランジションのところも非常に素晴らしいなというふうに思いましたエク,スキューションエクスキューションもしっかりしていますし、えー、とてもビューティフルな傑作だというふうに思いました。Thank you, Patsan. Now、uh, let's hear from the prize winners. They are connected、uh, from their countries. First from France.、Uh, Matilda,、um, I'd like to hear from you. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much for this amazing prize. We are very grateful. And、uh, thanks for the review. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> このような素晴らしい栄誉ある賞をいただきまして本当に感謝申し上げております審査員の方々ありがとうございました Thank you Next connected from Botswana、uh, Yolisa <laughs> Hi、um, Thank you so much for presenting us with this award、um, It means a lot that this was something that The judges and the audience could connect with and connect with the story and the characters.、Um, really, the aim for us was to make something that could evoke some feeling out of the audience, if any. So, again, thank you for this award, and I'm extremely honored to be here receiving this on behalf of my crew. So, thank you. こんにちは皆さんこのような賞をいただきまして本当に感謝申し上げておりますこれは私どもにとって本当にたくさんの意味あることなのですそして私どもの作品によって審査員の方々とオーディエンスそして我々の作品に関係性を持つことができたということストーリーとキャラクターをつなぎ,と、えー、つなぎ合わせることができたということがとても重要であるというふうに思いましたもし我々の作品が皆様方見ている中で何らかの感情を喚起することができたならばこれに越したことはありません私のキャリアにとっても本当に役に立つと思っています感謝申し上げておりますこのような賞をありがとうございましたまた温かい言葉をパットさんからいただきまして感謝申し上げますし審査員の皆様方にも感謝申し上げますノミネーションされただけでも本当に感謝しておりますもちろん私だけの話ではなくて私この制作になってありましたはビッグチームで一緒にやってきましたので本当にありがとうございます Hey, once again,、uh, from France, Botswana, and the UK,、uh, the great、uh, prize winners. Please give them a warm round of applause once again. Continuing on, international video content category, the first prize. Are you ready? Now, if I think about it, I needed to have some cool phrase for the opening. Well, this next year you just decide on some cool phrase to start the, the talk. Okay, so two first prize winning works. The first one from Canada, from Sheridan College, Chen Sin Yap. The title is Shift. And from Norway, from Volda University College, Eric Hagen. The title of the video is Tanabata. So, two words received the first prize. Congratulations. Now, let's hear from the judges again. First, Jeffrey Stoker about Shift, your comment. Yes. 
thank you for giving me the chance to comment about uh, this wonderful piece of work. I mean, I think it's the movie of the year. It's the <laughs> movie of uh, our present time that is so nice because it's not just reflecting on the corona pandemics, but what corona pandemics does with all of us. It puts us back to the very important questions of our relationships, of our role in society, how we deal with our own fears, how we can be brave and bold and help each other. And this is done in a wonderful simplicity that creates his own strength out of the simplicity. I think it's really 100% great work. Thanks for this and congratulations. 私にコメントをする機会を与えてくださったことに感謝申し上げます。これはとってもワンダフルな作品だなというふうに思いました。というのも、今この時を描写している制作だったからです。コロナ、パンデミックがどのようなことをしでかしているのか、そしてそれが我々にとってどういう関係性を持っているのかということを無実に示しているものだと思います。その中で我々が問わなくてはいけないのは我々がそういう社会の中でどういう役割を果たしていかなければいけないのかそこにある恐怖そしてそれを打ち勝つための勇気大胆さそしてお互いに助け合うということこれが非常にシンプルな形ではありますがこのシンプルがゆえにそれがパワーとなって描写されているということがこの制作の中でも 100% 分かることができました本当に優秀な作品だと思いましたありがとうございます Next let's hear from Pat San about Tanabata Pat can, we, can you comment about Tanabata please? Yeah,、uh, Tanabata was a really cool film. It was like watching a symphony, you know.、Um, the, the design of it was really nice. Like from beginning to end, it was just really beautifully done.、Um, you can feel the,、um, you know, all the, the energy that was projected,、uh, the beauty of nature,、uh, the way、um, our world functions in terms of、uh, energetically,、uh, the way animals move、um, and can really understand. The tone of negative energy, and you can just from the beginning all the way to the end, where,、um, where it was just a nice cap of just、uh, removing evil off the planet or、uh, some kind of negativity off the planet, and、uh, working together as a team, as you know, nature、um, and removing kind of this dark force was just a really beautiful,、uh, well put together film in the color, the graphic elements to it. Uh, the design of it and the synchronicity of the, of, of, the,、uh, of the sound effects and the music. It was just really, really well done. So, congratulations on producing an incredible film. t a n a b a t a was a very cool film. It was a very cool film. It was a symphony. It was a very cool film. 初めから終わりまでデザインがそれを物語っていましたしとってもビューティフルだというふうに思いましたというのも自然美そして自然が持つエネルギーをここから感じ取ることができたからですそしてそれによって世界がどのように自然に機能しているのかまたそこからどのようなエネルギーが発生しているのかまた動物はそれに対してどういう反応をしているのかそしてマイナスのエネルギーはどういうふうになっているかということを初めから終わりまで描写していましたそして一緒になって協力してこの悪であるとかマイナスのエネルギーを排除するということができるのだということを示してくれたというふうに思いますチームになれば自然がそして我々が合体すればこのダークフォースを排除することができるのだというふうに示してくれましたそれはカラーにおいてもグラフィックにおいてもデザインにおいても非常に音響効果もまたミュージックもシンクロした形で素晴らしく表現されていたと思いますおめでとうございます。Thank you, Pat.、えー、<laughs> それでは受賞。Okay, so let's hear from the prize winners. First, from、uh, Chen Xingyap from Canada. Comment on your、uh, work and what do you feel now? Ah,、uh, hi. Thank you to the thank you to the judges, ISCA and Knowledge Capital for presenting us with this award and supporting young artists. We made this movie in one very busy month during the pandemic. I could not have done this without the efforts of my team, especially my talented producer, Minerva. I would also like to call attention to the important work that healthcare workers and essential workers have done and continue to do for us during, during these difficult times. 
we all have to do our part to stay responsible so that their, so that their sacrifices will count for something. Now more than ever, it is important that we show empathy not just to our loved ones, but also to everyone around us. Thank you. こんにちはこのような賞をいただきましてイスカの皆さんそしてナレッジキャプタンの皆様ありがとうございます、えー、我々はこのパンデミックの中でチームとしてやってきましたまた私を支えてくれたデュピティを担当してくれた人も非常に役割を果たしてくれました特にこのような状況の中ではいわゆる仕事を休むことができないようなエッセンシャルワーカーの方々我々のと共に一生懸命働いてくれているというふうに思っています我々はやはりおのの農分野において役割を果たしていかなくてはいけないというふうに思っていますし我々は他者に対する思い入れというものを忘れてはいけませんしまた我々が愛する人だけではなくて我々の周りにいる人たちの感情を犬ということも忘れてはいけないと思っていますありがとうございました。Okay, from Norway, Eric Hagen. Uh, thank you very much for this award, and um, thanks to Pat for the really nice words, and uh, also to ISCA 2020 for selecting my film, to,、uh, along with so many great、uh, student projects.、Um, I'd also like to thank my school, Volda University College, and all the teachers and classmates I had there, and also to my, my good friend s t o v l e n c h u who made uh, uh, a beautiful soundtrack for the film. このような賞をいただきまして感謝申し上げておりますまた、えー、素晴らしいコメントをいただきましたパットさんにも感謝を申し上げますし選んでくださいましたイスカの方々にも感謝申し上げますまた私の出身の大学ボ,ボルダに対しましても感謝申し上げ私の制作を支えてくれましたサウンドエフェクトを担当してくれましたマシューとともにまた他のチームの皆様にも感謝をし感謝を申し上げたいと思います Thanks and congrats again. Once again,、uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give them a warm round of applause to the prize winners. Finally, time to announce the grand prize for the international video content category. The grand prize goes to. Are you ready? Okay, so I feel sense of unity. Everyone shouted with me. Okay, so that's great. The grand prize goes to Out of Ordinary at,、uh, from ZHEDK, Zurich University of Arts, Alicia Pal. Congratulations. Now,、uh, let's hear from the Chief Judge, Cynthia,、uh, your review and a comment on this film. This work, please. Oh, I'm so happy to be able to congratulate this team.、Uh, mixing media, different art forms, is never easy. And what's astounding about this work is that although it's based on dance, it's not. Just filming dancers, dancers, it's really moving the dancers through space, moving them through different levels of intimacy. The costumes are just amazing, changing costumes. So at times we see them in dance dress, at other times the cloth is shimmering so much, they're wearing these elaborate fabrics that take over, and it's all about light and texture. And the bodies are just kind of moving through the light and texture of the costumes.、Uh, I'm really impressed that this team pulled together so many different elements of working with bodies, working with space, and made a really coherent, moving film out of it. And、uh, I have to say, as a, as a former painter, I love that it starts in an art gallery. So, we're kind of brought into that moment of thinking about art. 
in that way and then pushed beyond. Uh, it's really congratulations on pulling this together and I understand it was a very diverse team of people who worked on it. So I'm sure that the challenges of communicating different ways of thinking were really great challenges and you succeeded. So congratulations. に腕仕込みをしていますこれはいろいろなメディアやまたアートパフォーマンスをミックシングをしているのですこういうことをしますとなかなか難しい仕事なんですしかしここでびっくりすることはダンスそれもいろいろな種類を取り入れましてそれを
the film seemed to get more interesting, more cha more challenges are taken on. We've really seen people explore what it means to narrative. I mean, narrative is not just simple storytelling, um, but it's putting us into different mindsets and people are really exploring this in such different ways. This is, for me, been so the most exciting part to see that people are willing to break apart the idea of narrative and make it be more than just, here we go from point A to point B, but pull us through all kinds of exciting ways of using the materials available to us today with new technology. So. It's been great. It's been really a wonderfully inspiring opportunity. で、すべてのものを見せていただいた好評ということをお聞きになっているのでしょうかと思いましたが、全体的な好評ですね。毎年私どもこれを拝見しておりまして、そして審査をさせていただいて、その度にフィルム自体がものすごく面白いものになってきているなというふうに感じています。そしてチャレンジも次から次へとされているなという思いでいっぱいです。え皆さんは、えー、ナレティブをどうするかということについての探索をいろんな形でやっているように思いましたえ単にナレティブといってもストーリーテリングで終わってはいけないのですその中にどういうふうなマインドセットがあるのかということを、えー、皆さんいろいろ研究されているというふうに思っていますいろいろ異なったものをその中に入れようとしていますのでそれを拝見しますととっても興奮してきますえそして通常のナレティブをブレイクアップしてえポイント A からポイント B に移るときにもいろいろな新しいテクノロジーを使ったり新しい表現を使ったりして表現できるのだということをこれでもかという形で見せてくれるえ素晴らしいインスピレーションに富んだ機会を毎年いただいております。本当にありがとうございました。So that's it、uh, for the international video content category. Congratulations, everyone, once again. So this year on the Instagram, Roy Kun, TV radio Roy Kun is on Instagram and he's going to announce the So Good Award on Instagram after this. So right after I leave here, then. Move to the Instagram to check it out the, the result of the So Good Award. And after that, well, we will invite Mina Lina, the graphic design studio of Harry Potter,、uh, Mina and Lima, the special talk live from London. From the, after that, so、uh, please enjoy that. Uh, if you want to listen、uh, to the original English, then go to YouTube and、uh, select the English channel. This channel you are listening to right now is going to be Japanese.
Okay. オフカ日本における巨大な経済圏を持つアジアのゲートウェイ大阪駅に隣接するグランフロント大阪の中核施設ナレッジキャピタルそれは人と人人と物人と情報をつなげ新たな価値を生み出す知的創造交流の場ビ
Yes, we'd like to show you a video just to give you some understanding of the kind of work that Eduardo and myself do for films. And this case, it's for Harry Potter. Ah, que video. <laughs> I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Three quarters. There's no such thing. Anything off the trolley, dears? by no less than seven muggles. Ronald Weasley! How dare you steal that car!
Hello again, thank you for watching. Um, we hope that that video gives you as students uh, some idea of the scope of work that a graphic designer for film has to create um, to help tell the story. Uh, the kind of work that a graphic designer would have to do for films can be anything, as you saw in that those clips, from the, from tickets to books to newspapers, maps, magazines, and sometimes also the design of uh, exterior sets, for example, street um, shops and, and sign, signs and advertisements. So it's the application of graphic design and pattern to uh, the set that has been already designed and constructed by the rest of our design team. Uh, and, and, and Mira, before we carry on, there's just another little video that we would like to show that it kind of shows uh, also some of our other work as well, not Harry Potter or Fantastic Beasts. So that was a very quick clip of everything else that we have done since we finished working on the Harry Potter mm -hmm. film uh, ten, 10 years ago? Yes. 10 years ago, yeah. So Next Eduardo year. and I started working together 20 years ago uh, on the second Harry Potter film as graphic designers um, and we spent 10 years together working on that film series before we decided to set up our design studio called Mina Lima. And it was so it was so funny when we were looking for a place to open Mina Lima. No, Mira, we were uh, thinking so much about the name of our design studio that we tried so many different uh, names that didn't work until we kind of realized that our surnames are kind of uh, it match beautifully. You no, know? it's a perfect combination in uh, and Lima. Okay. And also, it, 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 and also, it is a very nice. Uh, it's a very easy name to pronounce, you knowing in all languages. <laughs> but more importantly, in speaking about the union of Eduardo San and Mira San, is that um, we worked so well together as designers on the films that we realized that we had a lot more to design beyond just working on film design. And that's what gave us the idea to start working in book design uh, and theme park work, uh, marketing. But uh, the greatest thing is being able to collaborate with a uh, fantastic team of, of designers, which we now have as a studio, which we could not do when we were just two individuals. Yeah. But, but Mira, um, how did you start working in films? 
So I studied uh, set design at uh, college. After I left school, I went to art, an art college to uh, specialize in theater stage design, uh, which was really thinking about the actual design of the space for a theater production, and eventually studied the same set design studies for film at the National Film and Television School in London. And it was there that I met Stuart Craig, who is our fantastic uh, designer of Harry Potter, uh, and really started to eventually work with him. And that gave me the opportunity to stay with him throughout all the Harry Potter films. And how about you, Eduardo? I, I'm from I'm from Brazil, and I since I was a, a little boy, I was always fascinated about filmmaking, and 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 cinema in general. And uh, my dream was always to move abroad, to live in, in in I don't know in Los Angeles to do films or New York, and I didn't think to come to London. And it was on the last minute that I made the decision to come to London and. Um, but I studied uh, graphic design in Rio, in, in Rio, in Brazil. And uh, but I work, but I work uh, before. Uh, I never really worked doing graphics for films. My first job as a graphic designer for films was in Harry Potter. While I was in Brazil, I was working film, but in editing. Uh, so uh, so when I moved to London, I I met Mira and. Um, and uh, I work normally for a few weeks at work experience, and after I, I stay and have a left. You're fine. <laughs> and that was in 2000, 2001. So, yes, so next year is a very special year for us because we will be celebrating 20 years of collaboration. So really, it's because of Harry Potter and having to design uh, work for the Wizarding World that has brought Eduardo and, and me together. And we're very grateful for that opportunity creatively because uh, so much of the work that is required for that film from a graphics point of view uh, is central to the storytelling. And that's what interests Eduardo and I is how we can best help move the story along, whether it's a film or an advertisement or an exhibition, uh, a theme park. How can we help put the top layer of design onto a set design or a situation so that you as an audience can completely believe in this world that has been constructed? And of course, with the wizarding world, we were given a lot of freedom to imagine what that world should look like. Yeah. Um, we do look at the books for reference, but a lot of it was left to the filmmakers, uh, even in different departments, to imagine what this world should look like for the audience. And that's a, a great gift to be given as a designer, because then your imagination can run wild and I hope that's what you've all been doing as students as well in this uh, that's the best time to do it is when you're studying <laughs> um, there's plenty of time to to then settle down to doing um, <laughs> professional work but I think when you're uh, in the in the student situation you can be really experimental in your thinking that's uh, a, a great time to explore your imagination and try and hold on to that uh, really forever. I think Eduardo and I quite often feel like we're still children when it comes to yes. uh, our approach to um, storytelling and it's important to keep that that thread alive. Uh, Mira, might be good to explain a little bit the process, how like an art department you know, for a big film like this, like for Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts works. So 
the first thing we do when we get to the film, to a new film, uh, the first task for anyone, but especially for us, the graphic department, is to read the script. So we read the script, and after we read again, and when we the second time we read the script, we do uh, is where we do the breakdown, where we're going to start creating all the list of all the objects that are necessary for every scene. So we create like two two lists. One list is the action props, so would be all the props that the actors interact with. For example, in Harry Potter, would be the Marauder Snap, the Daily Prophet. The, the school books, those are action props. And after you have a huge list, much bigger than the action props that are the, the, the dressing, all the background uh, uh, dressing that you needed to put in every single set. For example, if you are flourished plot, the bookshop in Diagon Alley, uh, we had to populate the, all the shelves with books. And, and so all the books have labels, have the titles. So, and if you are in the street, if you are, again, outside Tiger Alley, you have to create all the, the signage, all the names in the shops, like all the, the papers, all the posters, all the price tags and products. So this is all part of the graphic. So those kind of things we call dressing, uh, background dressing. And, uh, but the things that he, you guys recognize are the action props like the Daily Prophet and Marauder's Map. So it's, it's very, it's not very, it can be very huge, the list of tasks that we are required by the, the graphic department. And, uh, and, I remember and course, that, I remember that after the up Harry Potter number five, uh, was just me and Mira and working and we had the casual help us coming and, and, and help us. But from Harry Potter 6, we realized very quickly that because of one specific set on Harry Potter 6, the Weasley's, uh, Weasley, the Weasley's shop, that was the, the, longer, the most amazing uh, set to work on. Uh, so we had to find, to get an assistant. And now with Fantastic Beasts, our department is much bigger because the demands are growing. And that is great thing for for all the graphic designers out there, like every single film now, um, really realizing that they needed to, to invest in a, graph, in a proper graphics department with proper graphic designers or people that understand about that face. And, and so now on Fantastic Beasts, we have a, our, um, our department, are uh, six people, we have a coordinator and three assistants, and me and me. Um, actually, but again, that is great for all the graphic designers that are out there that wants to have a, a career in films that the, is growing and there are loads of graphic designers now working constantly for films and for Netflix, for Disney Club and everything. So. And of course what we learnt by working together in the film environment was that storytelling was the most interesting aspect for us as designers and that then encouraged us and gave us a, um, a inspiration to, to start designing our own books, some of which are behind Eduardo. Um. <laughs> so these um, these books have been a real joy to, to work on because we're able to really, uh, again, use our imagination and um, not have to um, take the uh, instruction from uh, from someone else. This is completely our own uh, uh, interpretation of how this these stories might be uh, interesting and also be something that is a treasure for a family and a reader and a child, an adult, whoever. But um, it's been a real um, uh, fantastic experience to be able to create this body of, of work, a bit like we did for the Harry Potter films, but it's more our own signature uh, as designers. Um, and also, we, I think it doesn't matter how old you are, you're always still trying to learn new techniques, new ideas and new ways of working. Uh, and when we started 
designing these books, we our experience of book design was really limited to working on f making fake books for films, not real books that we could um, we could send around the world to to different languages and so on. Um, so I think over the last eight years, we've actually managed as a studio to become um, serious book designers. Yes. Kind of by accident, but again, led by passion. I think all our decisions in design are usually led by something that we really want to do. And I think that's an important message uh, to also share with students is to really find the thing that you're good at. And that's usually the thing you love too. The two things should travel together. Um, and then your voice is true and you're able to tell those stories with uh, conviction and with an authenticity that your readers and your viewers and your buyers will understand and, and uh, speak the same language. And of course, by doing this series of books, it, it enabled us to then come full circle back to uh, to revisit and rethink Harry Potter, but on the page and not on the screen. Um, uh, and it's even come to your fantastic country, which is a complete surprise for us. Um, you know, when we were working on the films, we would never have imagined that one day we would actually get to design the original book um, and step away from the film, imagine in a different way some of the elements of the Harry Potter story that... Sorry, Mira, you, I, you carry on talking and I show up. <laughs> Edward is going to do the viewing. So, for example, here with Diagon Alley, we, um, we had to move our ideas from the... We had to park the ideas uh, of, from the film uh, and reimagine how we would like it to look for the book. Um, Edward is getting tangled up, I think. <laughs> Um, uh, so having a book that has interactive elements has allowed us to um, to take the reader into a new kind of fantasy that's not uh, the moving image on the screen and presents new challenges, new ways of designing and thinking. Um, but the most important thing is that we engage the reader to come on the journey that uh, that has been set out by the writer and obviously in how it's been imagined by us. We want the reader to join us on this journey through the stories. Uh, so we had, it's been such a gift again, 20 years later from working on the films to then be invited by Scholastic to reimagine the stories on the page. And we're just actually working on the second book now. So New challenges every time, doesn't matter where you are in your career, every day brings new challenges, new opportunities. Um, and that's what keeps everybody alive, I think, as and excited as designers. Uh, we have a fantastic team at Mina Lima. There's um, uh, a few people, all with different skills. There's the Gryffindor fat lady, he's, he's showing us. Um, Oh, this is Can you show us inside Diagon Alley? Oh, Harry's letter. So we see Harry's letter as the first object in the films. And it's really Harry's transition from his life as a non-wizard to this completely new experience as a wizard. When we had to design it for the book, we had to reimagine what that would look like. Um, yeah. Eduardo is sharing some of the um, diagonally illustrations, which you can unravel from the book. I think um, we Sorry, would love. Uh, <laughs> it's quite big. I think he's having a fight with it. You need to you need to put a spell magic spell on it, Eduardo. There you go. Go back. There, that's <laughs> I think we we'd love um we we it doesn't make a difference to us 
if we're telling a story to think whether it's a child or an adult reading, the most important thing is that people's imaginations are set on fire and they can run in their own way. Um, because some of the time as a creative, whether you're a writer or a designer or a director or a um, composer, your job is not to give everything to the viewer, but to give them tools to unlock their own imagination to enter into this other story. Um, sometimes we have to be really strict about a specific time period. Eduardo, maybe you want to talk about Fantastic Beasts and how it was a bit different because we were in 1920 and not 1928, so we had to be a little bit more specific in our design choices. It was a nice surprise when we were aware of fantastic beasts coming. And we thought we finished the last Harry Potter, that was it for the films, and also it was a very good to know that Fantastic Beast was coming and was going to be five films. So we did two films, not the first and the second one. The first one was the and the second one. And we are working now at the moment on Fantastic Beast 3 uh, that's coming out. And here, uh, right, I, the, the good surprise about Fantastic Beast is, of course, you now we are visiting. We are visiting new uh, wizarding worlds. You now we are for the first time. Uh, is that that we the, the film is in 1926, 1927. To recreate that period, uh, it's a really nice challenge. Uh, quite all the art. They were beautiful, like all the posters, all the labels, <laughs> and uh, like painting. Uh, we, we try no minute to do like a very nice homage to all those beautiful artists from the 20s and 30s. And 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 the and the. And also the difference between Fantastic Beasts and Harry Potter, because in Fantastic Beasts we are in a muggle world, now on the North Pole world. To make sure that we represent Harry correctly. Mia, yeah, we hope that next year we will be able to talk a little bit more Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 can, we do we have can, a good reason to speak Japanese yeah. we, because we um, we were very we've had so many fantastic opportunities in our in our lives working lives together. But really, um, two years ago when we were invited to come and and present our House of Mina Lima gallery and shop in Osaka at the British Fair. It was a bit of a dream come true because it seemed like such an impossibility to be known and followed in such a different part of the world as Japan. And when we arrived in Japan, we received a, a most extraordinary welcome from uh, Japanese wizards and witches. And it was... Um, Every day that we were there was a complete surprise and joy to know that uh, this language that had been created between the filmmakers and the audience all over the world was very strong. And uh, it didn't matter if we couldn't speak all the words because the work that we had done for Harry Potter was already understood by the audience in Japan. So it gave us a fantastic um, tool for communicating with such a wonderful country as yours. And so we we then decided the following year to open House of Mean Lima in Osaka. And uh, we're pleased to say that that's still uh, open and 
Uh, we'd love you to visit it to give, get some idea about uh, what it is that we do and uh, uh, and know that all of our work in House of Mean Lima has come from from us. There is there's no other uh, and, and, products and, and from different and places. And just tried to mirror that we all and then to have the opportunity to have a, a presence there, to have our little house there for you guys is amazing. And uh, and when we went there the first time and the second time, we, we are in love with the culture with you guys. So, so yeah, you're gonna see more of us hopefully very soon. And this and this has almost a lovely uh, wizard. And uh, as soon as she gave that to me, I, 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 I don't wear any other hat. This is the only hat I wear because I really love that is written in Japanese. So I feel, I feel proud. <laughs> and Mira, and graphically, no, it looks lovely. Now the name, our name. <laughs> I so, think we're going to... Um, Sorry, Mia, carry on. Sorry. No, I, I think I just wanted to wrap up and say that, you know, it's... Um, every day brings us surprises with uh, work as designers and business people, and uh, we never imagined that we would be here talking to you across the world, and uh, it's with great honour that we've been invited by ISCA 2020 to make this presentation and to congratulate you at the beginning of your careers and the awards that you've received today. Um, so maybe now's time to pass over the microphones to you. And if you have any questions, I think we still have about 15 minutes available to um, answer any questions that you have for us. So there's never enough time to really tell you the whole story. <laughs> If everything will be kind of back to to normal, we are we are planning a trip to to. to we would love. So we hope we can do like a proper presentation, uh, present. In person. In person, yeah. So over to you, Iska, if you can field any questions from your audience, we're here to take them. Thank you so much for the inspirational talk. Yes, uh, we cannot really you know, cover everything from that short period of time, but uh, it was really, really personal uh, stories and I was inspired very much from the talk. So yes, of course, we have received a couple of questions from the viewers of this channel. So let's go for the first one. Yes, so obviously the Harry Potter series and Fantastic Beasts series are blockbusters. So the students might like to know how you did grab the chance of that, you know, big opportunity for the career of yourself. So how, how did you capture and grab the chance? Um, well, don't forget that uh, most people who work in film are freelancers. So we are hired for a single project, not for a series. Um, so when I was called for that very first film in 2000, uh, I really was just working on that film. I had no idea that there would then be 20 years of engagement with this franchise. Um, but in a way, that's a good thing because I think you then put your energy, all your energy creatively into this one project to try and do your best on that. And if it works, then there's another one and then there's another one. And I think that's what happened with Harry Potter. And, um, we were so focused on each film as it came along um, that we didn't really 
realised that the project was much bigger. It was only later that it became evident the success of the films. I think it was around before that we 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 all in the art department and in the production we kind of like oh okay there is something we are making something really really special here. But again, I knew that how much success and how much love and, and care this film would would receive from, from you guys. So, and to be part of that, be uh, part of helping create this incredible work, it, it's so touching and, and it is very great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So let's go for the next one. Would you describe the exact uh, moment that you get the uh, inspirational idea? Uh, that's a <laughs> difficult question. If we knew the answer to that, we would be, uh, we'd probably get everything done much quicker. Unfortunately, and I'm sure all the creative uh, minds that are present at ISCA uh, sympathize with this problem uh it the idea doesn't just appear like this um you can see behind me that there's a lot of books in our library and in our studio we have a very big uh library that we've collected over the 20 years working together um so sometimes the inspiration needs to be hunted down like um an animal going into a forest to find the particular Thing that is going to then uh, help them to to keep growing. Sometimes um, it's because you're telling a historical uh, fact, and so you need to reference specific material from that situation. But most importantly, as a creative person, is you should be all the time having almost like a radar on your in your mind that can pull inspiration all the time and park it somewhere in your in your head so that you can uh, keep your imagination going all the time. It's quite tiring. Yeah. And, you know, it, 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 it's absolutely true. Like, for example, yesterday I was, I had to start a completely brand new design. And, uh, and I started, I a formula to start, now you open a new Photoshop file, you select, you create, and you create the shape, you create, you put all the guidelines, and after you are, you look at to the, the white screen, no, to the to the page, and and you look, and the page look back at you. There is like that moment that you just look in each other, and um, say, okay, what's gonna happen? Here? And and suddenly it's so weird the and fascinating brains of creative that suddenly you just start moving around you, you bring a typeface bring a pattern bring like a texture and somehow things started to to think but i was because i was I, because i started in design i was trying to see is there a formula is there a way that i can repeat that everything is kind of really different and, 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 and the way you find it is different from the other or the project that you do. But the only thing now is that that makes a little bit easier for us that something will happen on that white screen is that we already been there a hundred millions of times before in all the other uh, designs we did. There is that moment that you know how to shape up. But somehow the creative the creative juices. Maybe, maybe maybe it's important as well to not have the pressure of thinking that you need to come up with something brilliant. But as you said, Eduardo, you just need to get stuff on the page and see yeah. what it does. Because in any creative field, if you think as a composer that I need to write an amazing symphony, that's a long way off from the first note that you're going to make. So maybe you just need to put some notes down together first and see 
what relationship they create. So it's quite, um, there is no scientific formula, but having an open mind is important. It can be books, it can be uh, uh, labels and old markets. And uh, uh, if you surround yourself with nice uh, references, and this all helps. Even if you don't look at you know that they are there and they are kind of send you good energy. <laughs> I think we have time for one more question. Okay, thank you so much. So one last question. So I'm a Jap I'm working for a bookshop, and I'm so excited to see the fantastic books created by Minasan and Limasan, and I really love the Harry Potter Mina Lima edition, uh, which contains uh, a lot of uh, gimmicks that entertain from children to adults. I imagine that there are much hardship or difficulties in terms of the book binding of this design. If you have any impressive episodes in the process, please tell us. Well, yeah, designing a book which we've had to learn by doing it rather than going to a school. Um, <laughs> Is a, is a, it's a very technical thing as well as an imaginative process. Um, and we work quite closely with the publishers and printers to make sure that the book physically is possible. Because the design process is very two-dimensional, but the book design process is a very three-dimensional process. So if you have, if you've got uh, removable pieces in, in the book, like diagonally that Eduardo was showing you, then we need to make sure that physically the book is possible to create with, ex with all this extra content in the book. And so the process of uh, the three-dimensional design of the book is just as important in this kind of book binding than it is um, in the, the two-dimensional design. And I'm glad that this uh, question he's brought up about the binding, because for us it's a really important part of the book design. And Eduardo just showed you the spine of the book. And um, this is a... We always want to give as much uh, value to this part of the book as everything inside, because after all, that is what you have on your shelves. That's what you engage with when you first go into the bookshop. Um, and we want that little spark of magic to capture the audience from the spine to the cover to the inside, even the um, uh, what we call end papers. So the paper that, that is at the very beginning of the book gets just as much design as everything else. So the book binding is a really important process and part uh, of the design. And of course, the choice of the effects and the, um, the technical effects that we might want to choose to do with the gold and the kind of paper. Uh, so all of those elements are just as important as when you go inside the story. So thank you to that question for for noticing and and there's one thing that we are, we are absolutely crazy, uh, uh, about books as Mira said we have a very big library of reference books but also I love no express to from charity shops and uh, and markets uh, just because of a fighting a beautiful blocking and beautiful emboss on, on the on the cover. So yes, the books is we love as much as and uh, and and being able now to re interpret Harry Potter in books as well yeah, is is a dream come true because it's two the two things that we love and the book and, and, and giving our own 
So yes, we are very happy that books are not going anywhere because there was one moment that we were all worried that books would be all digital. And uh, but... So I think that brings to an end our um, Yes, uh, thank you very, very much for your participation and wonderful contribution to International Students Creative Award 2020. Thank you very much. The talks were so inspirational, and I was very uh, moved and impressed. So we have had the Mila Fama and the Edward Nima from London for this special live talk. So Shiota-san, uh, I'd like to have the microphone. And Shiota-san, please join. Nabe-san, nabe -san, thank you. Minalima and Nabe-san, thank you very much. So, uh, SK 2020 started on uh, November 30th is going to be concluded due to the COVID-19. We did this as online, 100% uh, online. Did you enjoy the ESC programs and events? There are some benefits of online, but also we missed the opportunity uh, to see the participants and the contestants in person, but next year we may be able to see in person and the 2021 ISCA may take a different format. But anyway, thank you very much for your attendance. So see you in ISCA 2021. Bye. Bye-bye world.